away tonight, Stuart Atwell, who was VAR at Ipswich Leicester this weekend. Our VAR this evening is Paul Tierney. Full and white shirts, black shorts, white socks. We'll attack the goal away to our left in the first half. The Putney end, the mixed end away to our left. There is uh, no mixing tonight, though, because of the hostility between the two. Now, even a bit of segregation, which you don't usually see in the Putney end away to our left. Brentford in their change strip. They're playing in dark, deep green tonight. Attacking the goal away to our right-hand side, the Hammersmith end, in this first half. Danny Murphy made 200 starts for Fulham in all competitions. More starts than for anyone else in his career. When he was last in the Cottages kit, Brentford were in League One. But Danny, the first thing that Fulham have to do is ride out the first few minutes. Yep, Brentford have been exceptional in starting games well. Uh, I think uh, Fulham should be prepared for that. It's happened often enough. Yeah, well, early goals in the first minute against City, one against Spurs and West Ham as well. Two minutes against Wolves, 11 minutes against Sheffield Wednesday. That was slouchy in comparison. Brentford tend to land an early blow, and we've already had one in the FA Cup. Ian Abrahams. It's Chesham nil. Lincoln White and Jack Moylan with a brilliant strike from the edge of the penalty area gives the League One side the lead here. It's Chesham nil. Lincoln one. Goal kick away to our right for Fulham, who kicked the ball clear high up into the opposition half before it reaches down. It's headed away by Vandenberg and then collected by Norgard. Just 10, 15 yards inside the half away to our right, the Fulham half. It's picked up by Visu, scoops it into the air, headed away by Bassi, and then. Brentford trying to pin Fulham in, trying to push the ball towards the edge of the penalty area. Collected by Pereira, it runs loose. It's away by Anderson and now a chance to break. And it's picked up by Emil Smith-Rowe, running at pace and with real abundance down the left-hand side. Giving it to Robinson, who delivers a good cross towards the far post. Vandenberg bends it away, comes out as far as around about 10 yards short of the penalty area. And Berger keeps it alive for Fulham. The pressure now on at the other end. Nil-nil, a minute and a half played at Talk Sport. We're about 10 rows from the back of the uh, Johnny Haynes stand here on the halfway line. Really close. Here is Emil Smith-Rowe sending it back to Jimenez, who didn't get any purchase on the shot. From inside the D, he sent it straight down into the throat of the goalkeeper, Mark Flecken, and Brentford are able to clear. Nil-nil. Great start to the game. Good breakaway, actually, from Fulham. And then another sustained attack where Emil Smith-Rowe just couldn't get the pass into his pathway. Shields touched him sit behind, but it was really interesting opening, opening part of the game, Sam. Brentford went man for man on the press and left the 3v3 at the back and pushed everybody else with the attacking half. A bit like they did at Man City when I did that game. They man-to-man -man everywhere. Normally when you press, there'll be a spare man. There wasn't a spare man. So Fulham went long. It's going to be fascinating to see if that continues because if they go 3v3 with the pace Fulham have got in wide areas, that could be a big problem for Brentford. Only one point separates the near neighbours, but Fulham haven't beaten Brentford for two years and the B's record here is pretty solid. Fulham have beaten them once here at the cottage since 1990 and again you know we're looking at the way that Fulham are lining up they're aggressive they're leaving three up when Brentford are coming forward header away by Pinnock before it can reach Ooh. him and there was an arm up there from Yanolt and he's gone clattering into Pereira uh, he's gone down in a heap Stuart Atwell wants to check on his uh, prognosis Pereira is complaining there was an arm there Yan out being spoken to by Stuart Atwell, but no action is going to be taken, Danny Murphy. No, I think that's a classic case. So I don't think there was anything nasty in it, but I think if the, the player goes down screaming, he'll get, he'll get a yellow. Back by Ruslev to his goalkeeper as it's kicked long from the free kick that Fulham had inside their own half and then eventually worked out towards this near side. The huge riverside stand opposite us has the floodlights burning down on the pitch. The green grass looks slick and well manicured. And it is a chilly but not cold night by the River Thames. It's just a short journey down the Capitals River for Brentford. It's a great Hounslow place to play, sir. Into Craven Cottage. You love it here, don't love you? Love it playing here. Here is uh, Norgard. 
Brentford usually love playing here as well. Damsgaard tries to squeeze it forward. It's stopped by Sander Berger, who they picked up from Burnley. Goes back to the left fullback and Anthony Robinson, who skips past the challenge from Damsgaard. Oh, looks great. to release the ball down the touchline. It's won by Iwobi, who looks for Smith Rowe, and he almost got him in. And if he had got him in, Danny Murphy, then Andreas Pereira had moved into a good position in the inside right channel and was ready to be released. Well, it's slick play, and it's, um, it's high risk from Brentford. They're really going after Fulham. We've seen it before, we've talked about it early. They're going after them, and if Fulham play the if Fulham play correctly and with the right little bit of awareness and cuteness, they'll get through those lines. But it's we see it again. Collins is going in on Emile Smith Rowe, completely vacating the center half position as, as Smith Rowe drops deeper to build in the uh, to join in the build-up, sorry. And high up the pitch, 3v3, right across the bat line. Really unusual. Brentford with two players stationed on the edge of the 18-yard box. It's cleared away by uh, Bre- uh, by Fulham, who are trying to play out from the backs. Half-time in the game at Chesham. Ian Abrahams? Chesham nil. Lincoln won. Jack Moylan's stunning goal just before half-time. Menace's header kept out brilliantly by Wiggins. The best chance for the non-leaguers. Chesham nil. Lincoln won. One by Nelson on the uh, near nice. side. Who gets it back off Smith Rowe. Moves to the edge of the penalty area. Runs into the box. Right footed down towards the goalkeeper's right. Oh. It's saved by Flecken. And then again on the follow up. He pushes it away. Comes out to Robinson. Robinson's cross is deep. It's away by Pinnock. Hit goalwards by Pereira. It's blocked by a defender. There's half hearted appeals for handball. And Fulham still keep it alive. Nelson with an injection of pace and slick football down his left hand side. Combining well with Emil Smith Rowe. And having the game's first opportunity. Danny Murphy. Slipped in by Emil Smith Rowe, keeps finding these little pockets. And Reese Nelson tries to give the eyes to Fleck, and it's a good save, good double save, actually. Brentford on the attack now, they've turned it over, right edge of the penalty area. Damsgaard with the cross into the box, which is cleared away by Anderson. It's been a fast start to the game. We've played five and a bit minutes. You're listening to Talk Sport on a Monday night. Fulham nil, Brentford nil. Ruslav has it halfway. Nelson faces him up, it goes into the feet of Damsgaard who rather balletically turns and lays it off, gives it to him, Burmo eventually and Roslev on the overlap, sends across deep to the far post, King Lewis Potter was coming in but so was Kenny Tete who would spotted his run and intervened before it became a real problem and then Iwobi helping back his fullback manages to push the ball out for a throw in. What a start to the game, superb, it's like a cup tie. Well, we didn't think it was uh, going to be a game where there was any chance for either team to settle no but it's it's normally you have a little bit of see what each other's doing work it out take your time a little bit but the intensity has been terrific end to end stuff everybody trying to get on the ball going after each other in terms of press high throw looped in towards the near post flicked on goes behind goal kick is given despite the protest from Brentford that they wanted a corner kick Nathan Collins still in the ear of Stuart Atwell well he didn't have a cue close Stuart Atwell he was about 40 yards away and just pointed to the thing without knowing he looked across to the lines when he didn't have a clue either Burnt Leno then came out with the ball tried to throw it uh, yeah. it certainly went behind and then actually tried to <laughs> run out with the ball corner. Leno and uh, throw it out he didn't succeed in doing that before the referee pulled it back and gave a goal kick although there was a conversation between the Fulham captain and the official Brentford high on the press they've got four lurking on the edge of the box they send it short and wide to Anderson who clips it into the night sky Ooh. Pinnock allows it to bounce it almost went over his head but just about did enough and it's hooked back towards Mbermo who's squeezing into the box trying to go past the defender he bounced off the chest of Leno who has to recover scurry to the left edge of his six yard box and pull it into his body and bowl it out that was a chance Good defending from Robinson. He matched the run really well. Yeah, he's asking for handball in Bumo and did hit his hand, but I'm not sure that's in a... It was accidental, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was accidental. Well, that's uh, another example of the pace with which this game is being played out. It's been relentless so far. Hectic. And both teams look well drilled and well organised. Definitely well set up tactically. And actually, you know, you look at Fulham's results. If it hadn't have been for a late Beto goal, four minutes into steppage time, Anderson sending off at Villa, an unwarranted Danny Ings equaliser in the 90th minute for West Ham, yeah. we might actually be talking about Fulham the way we are talking about Nottingham Forest. Not far off, yeah. Small, small margins. Well, we've got a problem here for the Brentford goalkeeper, Mark Flecken, who is 
holding his right knee. He had the ball in his hands and then he bowled it straight out of play over on the far side. He uh, made a mistake, actually, for the equalising goal in the cup tie last Tuesday and then made a really good save in the penalty yeah. shootout to get them through to the next round. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed when he made the double save. I think it could be when he did the second part of that save, you know. Mm. The double save from Reese Nelson, which yeah. kept the scoreline at nil-nil. We played he kind of went down. I haven't seen a replay of him. I'm just thinking back to... Obviously, there was a lot of bodies in the way. I might be wrong, but he made the double one. He went back to the second one. He kind of spread his leg quickly on the ground in, a, in an unusual position yeah. to try and save it. You know, when the keepers come out with the legs, do you yeah. know what I mean? Slightly off balance yeah. and then maybe twisted something. So they are warming up their substitute goalkeeper. Doesn't Pat look good for him, does it? Valdemarsen, the Icelander, who played a couple of games early. Well, played a game early in the League Cup this season, Valdemarsen. But it's been a really bright start to the game and that chance for Reese Nelson, probably the best one so far. Pop forward this by Robinson now, into yeah. Nelson down the left-hand side. He got into the box, faced up the defender. Good save by Flecken. And you're right about the way he spread himself to uh, stop the second one. It was a, a shot at the near save. post, which he stretched his right leg out yeah. and it hit the inside of his knee. It might not be that, but it looks the most obvious thing because as he stretched it and he's whacking the ball at it, it his leg's vulnerable, if you like, to the power of the ball hitting him right in the middle of the knee. Maybe it's just jarred that medial ligament. He might be OK. Well, he started the season reasonably well. Brentford have started the season reasonably well. But their four league wins this season, Dan, have come against 17th, 18th, 19th and 20th in the table. So you do have to be a little bit careful not to overestimate their abilities. <laughs> yeah, true. But as long as they're sitting, I mean, I, I still think the way they're playing, Brent, the way they mix up, they're okay. And they've got people to come back from injuries as Absolutely, well, Absolutely, yeah. Rico Henry, the lad they signed, the centre forward. Thiago. Thiago, yeah. Who's been out since he joined the club. They haven't seen a glimpse of him yet. He was there to sign to replace Ivan Tony. Not that anyone's really talking about that with the goal-scoring form of Wisa and Mbermo. Good defender. That's Robinson again, who's got really tight to Mbermo and nabbed it, won it back and... Got them on the front foot. He's a USA international and a very busy summer, actually. Anthony Robinson playing in the Copa America and he's scurrying back now, allowing Calvin Bassi to take it out of play. And away for a goal kick away to our right-hand side. He's not only a very good defender, actually, Dan, he's, he's brilliant going forward. Well, his he cross into the box is terrific. Yeah, he's, he's high on his assist last season. Um, yeah. I know I spoke earlier about talking to Marco Silva and he, he was saying that he, he thinks he's one that could possibly go on you know, to bigger and better things. Not that he wants to lose them, of course. Well, he should be playing in a World Cup next year for the United States of America. Here is Raul Jimenez, who will hope to be there with Mexico, chesting the ball down and sending it back in the midfield. Two of his five goals have been penalties this season, Raul Jimenez, but he is scoring with more regularity under Marco Silva after a long period where... Finding the net was troublesome for him since returning from his terrible head injury. Robinson's got it again as Fulham trying to come forward. Nelson drops and lays the ball back into Emil Smith-Rowe. The two former Arsenal colleagues combining once again. Back to Ra Jimenez who's on halfway, physically pushing away Pinnock who's travelling with him right out from the centre towards his right side. That's left the gap for Nelson who's run into it down the side of the centre circle and now he's scurrying forward at pace. Gets to the edge of the D, now gets inside the box, continues to go oh. wide, goes down under pressure from Collins and there's quite a few who are jumping up asking for... Uh, the referee to take a look at that but Stuart Atwell was on the scene he was very close to it and waved away any protest brilliant ball from the left back Robinson into Nelson who drifted in off that left wing into a more central position and then he decided I'm going he was running running nice close, close control committing people good defending in the end wasn't a penalty he just ushered him out and he fell over but maybe could have released Iwobi but nice and positive wasn't it good take on the half turn Whoa. Oh, Robinson's pinched it on the edge of the penalty area as Brentford looked to try and play out. Now they've hoofed it upfield because they know that they were under pressure there. Bassey comes across and he's just poked it as far away from the goal as possible. Might go out for a throw into Brentford over on the far side, level with the edge of the Fulham penalty area now. But Nelson was able to make that run because Pinnock was travelling with Jimenez. Jimenez had dragged him out towards his right-hand side. There was a little bit of a gap. Nelson spotted it, drifted into it and then tried to exploit it. Well, it's, it's 
spatial awareness, game intelligence, you know, to come in off that wide area, knowing that it was condensed, good little rotation with uh, Jimenez, and then knowing that the space is there for him to just dive into. And it's, you can tell he's confident. You can tell he's been at a club like Arsenal. He gets on the ball and he takes his touches and he doesn't panic. Just looks a, a really good player. One of those... Uh... Categories that are also applying to Norgard, who flicks it on. A miscontrol by Andreas Pereira, but they get it away anyway, Fulham. Nelson goes down, free kick is given against Damsgaard. It's going to be a free kick on this near side. 14 minutes played, and we are uh, sitting in an old-school stand. The brand-new stand opposite us is uh, not entirely full. We are crammed in here, and we're very low down, and there are one or two poles that are obscuring the view. Uh, for either penalty area you've got the whole goal that side haven't you just to the well, right, right. Just yeah, about. You? okay well you have to take this side of the goal I'll do the other side I can see the whole of the uh, the Putney end you're alright there John a more interesting note the um, the playing out from Fulham it doesn't need to happen it doesn't need to happen they're 3v3 so they've got man to man in the Fulham half so you're saying they should to go it more goes, direct quicker. Yeah. Now, they can't necessarily win the headers against the three giants at the back for Brentford. But when that ball goes long, as long as the midfield push up, they're 50-50 then to be on the counter. Instead of trying to play intricate, tidy football without a spare man. Tessé brings it down out of the sky from Anderson, then plays it into midfield where... Just short of the halfway line, Andreas Pereira tucks it square, finds Emil Smith Rowe. He brings it out wide towards the left, where Robinson takes over and just starts to drive down that left touch line. They go back to Nelson and then into the central area with Smith Rowe, and then Berger keeps things ticking over. A good one touch football from Fulham, and Smith Rowe has been sent in by Robinson into oh, the box. Gosh, right God. footed shot, and it's just a little bit wide because of a deflection. And it's behind and away for a corner kick. Well, I just saw a fan in front of me say that's good football. It's not good football, it's superb. Patient, Emil Smith-Rowe and Reese Nelson with Robinson down this left, causing all sorts of problems. And when he gets in, you're just waiting for the net to bulge in that inside left position. Emil Smith-Rowe, he opens his body, you wait. It's a great tackle from Collins, great block, I should say. That was a really good uh, block from Collins. He's right. it behind and away from a, a corner. And it's taken by Pereira towards the far post. An easy catch for Flecken, who seems to have shrugged off that ailment that was causing him grief a little bit earlier on, although we'll keep an eye on it. He has just launched with that right foot. A big clearance up into the sky. Robinson's taking it down brilliantly in the fullback position. And then under pressure from Imbermo, just going to find a way out of a tight spot. He's done that superbly. And then giving it to Nelson, who's giving it back to him again. Again, good so football good. by Fulham. Really good football by Fulham, who have been impressive so far. They've maybe played the better football, although it's still a really competitive game between these two. 17 gone. Fulham nil, Brentford nil. They have played the better football, 100%. But it's very much a Fulham performance in that getting into really good areas and not being clinical on the two occasions, they should have been better. But still, positive, really positive start by them. Nil nil the score. You're listening to Talk Sport Monday night football. And uh, the ball is wide on the right now with Kenny Tete and Fulham. He clips it upfield, the Dutchman. And it's pushed away by uh, Seth Vandenberg and out of play and away for a throw in. But even that, Sam, the ball goes up. The 3v3 we keep talking about. The ball goes up. Okay, they don't win it. But they then get a throw in you know, closer to the halfway line, so they've got more space to play. What a ball that is. What is an unbelievable ball out from the back by Anderson in towards uh, Smith-Rowe, takes it, then helps it on to Nelson. Nelson into Smith-Rowe. And then uh, Robinson finds Berger and then Smith-Rowe wants it again. Always ready for the ball, turns and holds on to it well. The oh. close control from Nelson has been terrific tonight. And he's just skipped past two challenges again. He certainly is revelling in having a place in this starting 11. It has meant that because he's playing on the wide left that Iwobi's had to go to the wide right tonight. We haven't seen as much of Iwobi as we have done recently, but Nelson has been terrific. Uh, header away by Roeslav. Nelson will try and keep it in and does down by the touchdown on this near side. Gets to the byline, okay. just overhits it. And he'll go behind the way for a goal kick, but a really positive start from the former Arsenal man. Really good. As I predicted. <laughs> Well, as you told me the last time we sat together, you aren't uh, wrong very often. It's actually, when it comes to football, I mean, let's not talk about love life. 
but I wasn't <laughs> even thinking about going there. But uh, <laughs> I thanks for that's the insight. Where you were go. <laughs> well, I was actually going to tell you, it's Fulham nil, Brentford nil. <laughs> You're listening to Talk Sport with Sky Sports, and don't forget that you can stream the biggest Premier League games available on no contract with now, like Fulham versus Brentford, live right now. Search now sports. I was uh, at Sutton, Birmingham yesterday, and one of their co-owners is a uh, celebrity matchmaker. I could hook you up if you want. Oh, I know who that is. Yeah, I saw a little document. Well, I said document. You know, a little newsreel when he was. Is he? Uh, is he financially invested in the club? Is he? Yes, he has now. Yeah. Yeah, he pulled them out of a hat on uh, Sunday brunch. Right. As a team to sort of support because he didn't have a team, and uh, I think Tim Lovejoy wanted him to have a team. And then, um, yeah, he's he got fully he's fully invested. Not only uh, financially but emotionally as well. And he was there yesterday. Here is Smith Rowe out to the far touchline for Fulham who are on the attack here everyone's fully invested in the way that Marco Silva has set this team up and they're playing really good football Fulham and have been all season it won't be jinking into the box tries to get beyond Villano or holds him up one again by Pereira they're still pushing Brentford back and they've kept the ball alive inside the Brentford half deep inside the Brentford half it's going to spill nicely here for Tete who finds Andreas Pereira Norgard commits a challenge but not a foul Berger wins it back as Brentford look to escape Nelson into the penalty lovely little jing right footed shot by him and it goes narrowly wide of the post well he worked brilliantly into the box with a little bit of magic and a trick to take him beyond the last defender but Reese Nelson is the star of the show so far and he could quite easily have had the opening goal not once but twice well I think he would have done he got he, one-on-one with Ruslev beats him gets a bit of luck and then I think he tries to go near post because well Collins has put himself in a great position to stop him curling it and just slashes at it a bit did well Collins I mean, they're pressing high up now, causing all sorts of problems for Brentford. Brentford, after what was a, a really aggressive start to the game, actually have been on the back foot for quite some time now, Danny. There's been some really good football. Some really bright, sharp, one touch, round the corners, good movement from Fulham. Everyone at it. Neil Smith Rowe doing what we know he can, looking full of confidence. And of course, him and Reese Nelson will know each other's game very, very well. Absolutely. But what Brentford do have is pace, threat from wide areas and set pieces and counter-attack ability. Yeah. And one of the problems they've got with Fulham is Fulham have got two of the quickest fullbacks in the league. Yeah. In Tete and Robinson. Robinson Both is like quick. a sprinter. Yeah. Here's Calvin Bassey as Fulham look to build from the back. Their captain Bernd Leno, who hasn't been as good this season as he was in the previous two seasons since joining from Arsenal. That's the ball clips the uh, ball into midfield and then it's sent long by Anderson it's, look that's a feature of the play now they've got Anderson in the team he can put those laser guided precision passes forward like he did for Crystal Palace and that gives it another bit of variation what yeah. that long ball does that goes over the head of the back three it turns Brentford rounds and pushes them back so then it gives you space to play a bit more because they'll get sick of doing it if they keep hitting that ball this is where they get a bit again look the long ball goes up and Jimenez fighting with uh, Sepp Vandenberg and then running into Pinnock. The ball is launched long again. Damsgerd is outmuscled by the burly Calvin Bassey and then it's sent wide to the left. And again, Fulham in control. They have the ball once more, deep inside their own half with Sander Berger, who uh, is tall and muscular. Looks like he could play centre half. Dictating He's elegant the, though as well, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Dictating from the base of the midfield can carry the ball and does that through the centre circle plays it out towards the left and Robinson who's 10 steps inside opposition territory he loses the ball and now Brentford have a chance to counter-attack out towards the left it goes Keen Lewis Potter gets a touch of the ball and he hasn't seen enough of it so far he's running at Tete comes inside right foot across deep towards the far edge of the six-yard box but Bert Leno is there grabs it runs out into the middle of his penalty area goes down wants a free kick Stuart Atwell says you've got the ball just play on. There's been a goal at Chesham, Ian Abrahams. Four minutes into the second half, Chesham nil, Lincoln two. Driven Makama ran through in a goal, and as the goalkeeper came out, he finished with a plum. Chesham nil, Lincoln two. Thank you very much. That's Ian Abrahams, who's watching the FA Cup first round game between Chesham and Lincoln right now. And we've got more live football for you over the course of the next couple of days on Talksport. But when do we not have live football for you? 
It is non-stop. Make sure you get the TalkSport app. You can listen to the lot, including Champions League action tomorrow night. Here is Janow from distance. Left-footed shot. Oh, it's a rocket from Janow. Five yards back from the edge of the 18-yard box in the inside left channel. He has unleashed a pile driver, which Bert Leno hasn't even seen until it's burst the back of the net. Brentford have been on the back foot for the last 20 minutes, but they are in front. Fulham nil, Brentford won. Wonderful strike. Beautifully struck from Jan Elt. Got himself into a little pocket of space. Looked up and thought, you know what, no one's coming out to me. Well, it was a terrific strike from Vitali Jan Elt. His last goal for Brentford against Newcastle on the last day of last season. But he won't score many better than that. Oh, I mean, he hit it so true, so firm. The ball played into him by Damsgaard, who sent it back to Norgaard. It was set up beautifully for Janel, and he drove it across the face of the goal. And Leno dived belatedly, but the ball was already nestling into the corner beyond the outstretched left arm of the German goalkeeper who knew he was beaten from the moment it left his compatriot's foot. It's a rifle from the edge of the box from Vitali Jano. And Brentford, who have really been second best in the game up until this point, lead by goals and ill, Danny. And that's the problem. When you dominate so much and don't score, exactly. you're always liable to suffering something like that. I still don't think it means... Well, Ke- Powell giving away there, I think it was Jimenez. On Wissa. Wissa. Yeah, I... I, um, I think it's... It's one of those things that happens sometimes in a game, that you're playing well, everyone's wanting the ball, things are... You know, you're in control and you don't quite get the goal, and all of a sudden you find yourself 1-0 down, you don't panic, you can't panic. Just be- keep the belief in what you're doing. The chances will come. But you're right, at this level, with the quality on the pitch, I mean, it was a hell of a strike. Sometimes you try and analyse where the problem was and what should have happened. I mean, he's got himself in four or five yards of space. He's oh, struck it, it beautifully. It's just a terrific hit, isn't yeah, it? I mean, yeah. uh, there wasn't much stopping it. I mean, the argument might be that someone needs to get out to him a little bit quicker. Can you stop the ball into him? But you don't see many balls hit that true. No. And there was no chance for Bernd Leno. And it's 1-0 to Brentford. And uh, for all the good football that Fulham have played, they are behind in the game. What they will take encouragement from is that Brentford have uh, been incredibly entertaining over the course of the season. They're not so adept at maintaining their advantages when they get them. They've dropped more points from winning position last season than anyone else, and that pattern has continued this season. They've dropped 11 points in matches that they've been leading. Let's see what happens. Iwobi, on to Andreas Pereira, down the right side, Collins comes across, Pereira tries to keep hold of it, now he thinks that that went out for a corner and he just takes matters into his own hands and walks over there to take it. Yeah. It's a good run from Pereira, it's one of the first times we've seen one of the central midfielders go past the centre forward and push Brentford back, terrific run from Pereira. Pereira to take the corner over on the far side, he's got uh, Bassi at the edge of the penalty area, Anderson just further back looking to get on the end of it Berger's in there as well it's in towards Jimenez who didn't catch it properly and it was blocked by Norgaard that was from the corner that went towards the edge of the six yard box and then Brentford fight back managed to get it out of play and away for a throw which is quickly taken by Pereira into Emil Smith-Rowe Smith-Rowe back to Alex Iwobi now Anderson Iwobi again right of centre far side back into Bassi. Bassi drives forward he drives into a bit of room and then plays it wide left where Robinson takes over cuts it back for Bassi. Bassi with a chance to cross he delivers the ball into the box which is flicked away by Pinnock it'll come out as far as Pereira and then Jimenez down by the byline looking to cut it back tries to turn infield but Keen Lewis Potter is there and stands up strong to the Mexican and then tries to exchange passes with Damsgaard and go on the escape but Fulham have penned them in good reaction from Fulham exactly what you want keep moving the ball quickly keep trying to pro mix the play up push them back 28 gone 1-0 the goal from Janel separating these two teams 
Smith Rowe has it again, pushes it wide. Robinson into Reese Nelson, down the left into the penalty area. Uh, the punt the end stands on its feet as Smith Rowe delivers across the far post, which is going to evade everybody and drop out of play. It was a curling one, which is going to the far stick, and it just dropped behind the goal away to our left, and it's out for a goal kick to Brentford whose fans are the ones that are singing behind the goal away to our left because of that hit from Vitali Janout Norgard with the assist but really that's all about Vitali Janout's drive an unstoppable rocket I mean that really is a beautiful strike and that's the difference between the two teams here is Sandra Berg Away by Norgard and a chance now to counter attack and Bassi and Mbermo go toe to toe and uh, Mbermo just realised he wasn't going to reach it before it ran out of play down on the right side down by the corner uh, but if that had been a foot race there was only one winner there and it wasn't Calvin Bassi. Fulham nil Brentford 1 the latest odds available from Labrooks where right now you can get Fulham to win the game at 12 to 5 Brentford 21 to 20 the draw 5 to 2 that's all thanks to Labrooks 18 plus BeGambleAware.org Talk sport. Jeff Stelling back on breakfast tomorrow morning, giving you everything you need when you wake up, assessing this performance and looking ahead to the Champions League action tomorrow night. Liverpool playing by Leverkusen. Adrian will be there. I'll be doing sporting against Manchester City tomorrow. Looking forward to that as well. Wednesday night, more action for the Champions League. Thursday night, Europa League action. And uh, this Saturday, we've got a late night kickoff on Saturday night, 8 o'clock, Liverpool against Aston Villa, which is a key encounter. Marco Silva furious because everybody assumed that Kenny Tetti was given the throw in over on the far side. It has now gone the other way. Stuart Atwell trying to calm things down. He but didn't it's... have a clue, nor did the Lionsman. It's going to be. Uh, oh my that's God. the second time you've said that tonight. Well, they're not looking. I mean, it's the most obvious. We've seen the corner. One was for Brentford, that one's for Fulham. But, you know, do your job, keep an eye on it. You can see it from here. All seeing eye of Danny Murphy, former Fulham and uh, Liverpool player, alongside us in the commentary box, former England man, Tottenham, Charlton, Blackburn Rovers, started at Crew Alexander, seen it all, pretty much done it all, almost won it all. Here is Damsgaard, back in field to. Collins now on to Sepp Vandenberg who stepped into midfield and then a right footed ball down the inside right channel for Brentford to attack Robinson holding off Roerslav and doing well and uh, just about shepherding the ball behind and away for a goal kick away to our right how do Fulham cultivate a chance because what they haven't done since the goal is managed to get a sight of Flecken's goal at the other end just keep getting in the areas keep getting in the in the final third and keep probing keep trying a little intricate passes the Wide men running at people, midfielders running past. Just keep doing what they're doing. They're, they're controlling big, large parts of this game. They look really dangerous. And Ruth Nelson has been at the heart of it, and he's just laid the ball on the side of the centre circle, forward towards the right, where a Awobi had it, then lost it, and has given it away. Norgard is very important at the base of that Brentford formation. Great at breaking up the play and turning possession over. Good with it as well. I, I think Norgard's one of the most underrated midfielders. Yeah, he's friendly. excellent. They've given it away though, Damsgaard, and it's been snatched. Smith Rowe sends it forward. He finds uh, Jimenez. It's given to Smith Rowe, edge of the penalty area. Pereira, two players down, tries a shot, hits the back of Pinnock. He should have laid it wide to the right where Iwobi was there, but he didn't. Instead, the game oh, is stopped here we go. because Norgard and Jimenez, both of them got clattered. They clattered each other in the middle of the park. And, uh, and what though? The they've not banged to... heads, they just uh, they let they're both fine. Let the game go. They give sort of strength. just Someone tangled, strength, didn't they, strength. as they uh, fell to the ground. I don't think there's too much in that. Both are up now. And it's going to be an uncontested drop ball. Danny's closing his eyes, shaking his head. Not entirely happy with that, are you? Oh, I can't keep moaning. This, I this, can't. That, that, you can't, you can't. It's not good. It's not good for your soul, Dan. It's not good for yourself. Not good for anybody. It's not good. It's not. No, no. It's all right. Sal's got you a, a boost at half. You got a boost at half time for him. What chocolate bar you got for him at half time to keep his blood sugar going? I'd like to put that orange kit on and those black shorts and ref this second half. Get a better game. Crikey. 
That'd be a sight for sore eyes. It would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fulham nil, Brentford one. You're listening to Talk Sport. I don't think you'd look great in orange. You're going to be honest. No, I it's completely not your colour. Can, I can care. It's not your colour. I mean, I'm not saying you look, don't look great in other things. We're back underway. What have you got? What, what are you wearing on your dating profile picture? How <laughs> do you make you think I've got a profile picture? Uh, here is. Grey and black, I think. <laughs> here's Robinson in the left fullback position. <laughs> Taking it backwards rather than forwards. He finds Bassey sending it long. We're in the uh, surrounds of uh, Craven Cottage, the historic home of Fulham Football Club. And they've had the best of the game so far, but. The scoreboard belongs to Brentford, who took the lead after 25 minutes thanks to Vitaly Janot's first goal since the end of last season. And uh, Fulham just haven't been able to turn their dominance into goals. Ball thrown in from the left side by Robinson into Smith Rose. And a lot of space to run into here. He goes up to the centre circle, distributes the ball wide on the right elegantly. His shirt untucked to the waist. He looks like he's running the show. He gets it back from Iwobi. He tries to poke it around the corner, but Norgard is there again. And then it's one back by Sanderberg, who stops Damsgaard from escaping. Turns it over. Left edge of the penalty is Nelson. Deep cross towards the far post. Jimenez goes down after being sandwiched between two green shirts. One of those is Pinnock, and he flicks the ball behind and away for a corner. Jimenez looks pleadingly at the officials, but all he's going to get is a corner. It was actually good defending in originally from uh, Damsgaard and then he loses the ball after doing the hard work. Good defending from Pinnock there from the cross from Reese Nelson, another corner for Fulham. Corner to be taken far side by Andreas Pereira, Allison up from the back. Tete is in there too, so is uh, Sander Berger and Bassi. It's aiming towards the near post, poor delivery, Norgard was there. Really poor. And it goes back out to the far side where Smith Rowe now takes the role of conductor he plays it onto Pereira on it goes to Kenny Tete Tete down in the right corner of the field over on the far side on the floodlights at Craven Cottage back in field it goes to Anderson Anderson across to Bassi uh, it's Owobi who picks it up with the red streaks in his hair he plays it onto Smith Rowe lovely ball round the corner for Robinson Robinson with a low ball into the six yard box and Flecken didn't quite get there and Collins managed to just scupper it clear and another good chance for Fulham goes a begging Beautifully done by Emil Smith Rowe. Made it look like he was going to go wide. Flicks it inside the fullback. Love watching him. Really getting, trying to get on the ball and make things happen. Really, really good. Pereira down the right side, looking to get a cross in from the right wing position. It's a low one into the near post, which is fended away by Pinnock. Out only as far as it will be. The pressure's still on. They're being suffocated inside their own final third here, Brentford. But they're holding on as the ball is played wide by Bassi onto Robinson. Robinson back to Bassey, into Smith-Rowe, inside left channel, Nelson, back to Smith-Rowe again, very tight on the edge of the penalty area, a little turn and move, out to the left, Robinson into, with a cross, headed away by Collins, and then it comes out into the midfield area, and Burmo looks to get it away, but Nelson putting the pressure on, it's going to run loose, Berger's going to pick it up, invading Keen Lewis Potter, turns it over again, they're deep inside Brentford territory here, the white shirt swarming forward again, right side, it's with Tete, then wandering infield is Iwobi, but he lost it to Damsgaard, and then he lost it to Kenny Tete, and once again, Fulham's pressure pays off, and they've got possession once more. Bassi coming forward, great football from, from Fulham, a joy to watch so far, but they can't get on the scoreboard. Smith Rowe to the left, Robinson, back to Smith Rowe again, into Nelson, Smith Rowe, all one touch, quick movements on the edge of the penalty area, back to Sander Berger, and then Bassi, and then a chance for Anderson from range to send the ball square. They need to get the ball in the box somehow here. Crafter. They don't actually, Sam. This is perfect. You keep, you're wearing them down doing this. You're wearing them down. They're having to work really hard, Brentford. Game's 90 minutes. Just keep probing. If you have to go back sometimes, no problem. Don't get let the fans lull you into forcing balls forward that you don't need to. To be fair, they've put a couple of great crosses in, but a two centre half for Brentford. Love that. One nil for Brentford. Is that you sneezing? It was me sneezing, but that's not the noise in our ears. No, I don't know what that is. A UFO, I think. It might be your dating profile going off. Here is Andreas Pereira, five yards back from the edge of the penalty area. Comes back out towards his left-hand side. Robinson plays it down into the penalty box, left 
channel, finds Nelson, who weaves across to the far post, and Kenneth dives and prods the ball away. Do you think the more they keep doing this, they keep knocking at the door, eventually it will open? That's all you can believe, and it, it, it makes sense that they're getting in such good areas, that final ball will come. I mean, it was Robinson early, wasn't it, from that super pass from Emile Smith-Rowe. Made the wrong choice. Berger, seven steps back from the edge of the penalty area, sends it backwards and square. It's played towards uh, Kenny Tete, out to Iwobi, and then all the way back to Anderson once again. Fulham's domination of the ball needs to uh, represent itself on the scoreboard. A little bit agitated, Marco Silva on the touchline, sees the ball pop up on the edge of the penalty area. Robinson wins it, pokes it forward, flicked on by Pereira, picked up though by Kenny Tete before there's an escape on. He gets a lovely ball back through the back heel of Iwobi on the edge of the area and then he forces his way into the box he's stopped by King Lewis Potter it goes to the far touchline Damsgaard tries to get it clear but across comes Anderson slides in pushes it forward it goes too far and dribbles out of play and away for a goal kick so we'll go back off uh, to the FA Cup Ian Abrahams should be all over now it's Chesham nil, Lincoln 3 Conor McGrandles from the best part of 25 yards out with a low drive past the keeper Chesham nil, Lincoln 3 just watching a couple of the Brentford players warming up over on the uh, far side. And one of our colleagues has just pointed out to me that as they were running up towards the corner flag, the uh, Fulham fans, not known for their uh, distasteful behaviour, were giving a bit of jip to the uh, Brentford uh, substitutes that were warming up. And you see, you know, he, there is a local rivalry and that does bring out the worst in everybody and the best. Here is Smith Rowe. Oh, I missed him. Great run from him and there's there. Emil Smith Rowe didn't quite see him. Yeah, run across his body and into the left channel. He went backwards instead of forwards. It goes out to Iwobi, whose cross is too deep. It's going to run right the way through the box. And it comes out this near side and uh, it'll go out for a throw. In. And uh, in Burma just allowing it to go out because he knows it takes a little bit of pressure off his team. Five minutes gone. You're listening to Chalk Sport. I wonder if that player who was getting a little bit of stick on the far side might have been Fabio Carvalho, formerly of this parish. Very true. All those well liked when he was here. Yeah, things change. Well, it does if you go and end up playing for Brentford. And you're uh, a guy who's come through the Fulham Academy. It's Fulham nil, Brentford 1 on Talk Sport with Enterprise Render Car. Enterprise has 450 branches with all the vehicles your business need. And we are four minutes before half time. And we love our Monday nights. Danny dissecting the weekend, the magic moments, Adrian on top form, some good games to get our teeth into. Fulham, though, they don't like it. They've lost six of their last seven league games played on a Monday night. That's not a good stat. And they are behind here. Here is uh, Mbermo tussling with Bassi. <laughs> Bassi sort of threw himself to the ground after the physical battle got a little bit too much for him. And a free kick has been given. And he crawls back uh, towards the ball and then gets up to take the free kick. One man you don't want to be having a tussle with, trying to get your body in front of him. No chance. In Burmo. Bassi. Bassi, yeah. Well, both of them are, uh, are rather uh, fierce competitors, physical specimens. Burmo's got big, broad shoulders, raw speed, and an amazing ability to put the ball in the back of the net. Yep. His um, finishing has been nothing short of terrific this season but also his penalty taking technique it's like they yeah. downloaded it from Ivan Tony <laughs> and uploaded it to him Burma maybe they practiced them together Anderson gets it back to Tete they're deep inside their own half here for them with trail by a goal to nil courtesy of Janolt's rocket inside the first 15 minutes the ball elevated long by Leno out to the right side of the Fulham attack it eventually after a bit of a mishap comes through to Andreas Pereira the Brazil international who releases Emil Smith-Rowe in the 10 position he runs up to the edge of the penalty area shifts it left it won't be with a cross Smith-Rowe with a header it's flying towards the far corner and Flecken is out he's still loose inside the box after a couple of ricochets give a foul and then the referee gives a foul before it can go out for a corner but Flecken's made a big save well, they switched to Wobie and uh, Reese Nelson a few minutes ago, and it's a Wobie who pops up on this left side after another pass from Emil Smith Rowe. And as a Wobie comes inside, puts the cross in, and Emil Smith Rowe doesn't get enough on it, hits Pinnock. Then it's the save. And I think, 
I think it's a brave save by Flecken because he's being challenged by Nelson, Nelson yeah. yeah. Although they kind of fall into each other, looking nasty there. Good defending from Pinnock, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Just glanced off uh, Neil Smith-Rowe's head. He needed to get a bit more of a solid... It was a good ball from uh, Wobie. He needs to get a bit more solid connection. Again, a chance. Another big chance for the home team. They'll be frustrated. I mean, as a manager, there's only so much you can say. Uh, they've played well. They've really gone after Brentford. They've got themselves in good position. Just that final bit. What, we saw it at Everton. Yeah. We That's saw it against West Ham. Manchester United on the opening day of the season. Man City. As I said earlier, you know, that, that final bit in front yeah. of the goal is the bit that's stopping them from being a team that, you know, everybody would be talking about. Here is uh, Robinson winning the ball and taking it away from Damsgaard. He just casually pushes the ball down the left side to Iwobi. Iwobi back to uh, Berger, who under pressure plays it to Bassi. And then it's cleared by Leno in towards the body of Iwobi, but the header was won by Roerslav. Robinson away on the edge of the centre circle inside Fulham territory. It's headed forward by Janot, flicked on by Visa, comes out to Keen Lewis Potter, inside left channel, sets it back for Janot again, takes another deflection, this time goes behind, just wide of the right hand upright. It's out for a corner for Brentford. They haven't done too much, but when they've had their moments, they've looked threatening. And Vitali Janol has scored one and come close a second time. Yeah, it was. He, he tries to guide it with his side foot from the edge of the box. I think it's Anderson or someone and gets Anderson, a touch Anderson on it. gets a little block enough to stop it going in the corner. Keep him out of it anyway, but still good defending from Anderson. Fulham nil, Brentford one on Talk Sport. Corner to be taken, far touch line, and it's going to be Mikel Damsgaard who scored that. Unbelievable free kick against England in the European Championship semi-final at Wembley three and a bit years ago. Right-footed, sends the ball into the middle of a crowded six-yard box, punched away by Leno. Leno tries to shoot it forward. It's blocked by Pereira on the edge of the penalty area and then recycled towards the far side. Eventually cleared by Nelson, but there's no one up top this time. They were leaving players on the halfway line before, but now it's just Iwobi chasing and we've got two minutes of added time at the end of the first 45. Well, games involving Brentford are often like a game of snakes and ladders. They think they've got into a great position, then all of a sudden they sliver back down to earth. It's happened far too many times this season so far. I think he'd be a little bit disappointed, even though they're winning. I've seen Brentford much better with the ball than this in terms of their quality and their technical ability. It's not like they can't. They've lost the ball too easily at times. Fulham have kept them pressed in. And, yes, and, and he'll be watching that knowing that if they play another second half like that they're, gonna, they're not going to win the game well, they don't often show great resilience I mentioned they conceded 18 goals already this season and uh, it's not very often they escape with a clean sheet either but it is Fulham nil, Brentford 1 and Simon Hooper just getting a bit of an earful from uh, Marco Silva, who will be joined very shortly by another Portuguese manager in the Premier League. Yeah. This time next week, we'll have two. Ruben Amorim, who takes charge of Sporting tomorrow night for the sure. penultimate time, live on Talk Sport against Manchester City. Why would he put himself through that with the fans? Because they're not going to be happy, are they? No, they've been all right with him. Yeah. They've been fine with him. I think he's given them more than they uh, were expecting when he walked through the door, mate. Yeah, I understand that. I, I just I read that the first game there was a little bit a few boos and stuff, but really, yeah, maybe we we'll read different material. No, I think the coverage has been pretty positive so far. I think we probably do read different material though. Uh, ball well, down I, re the I, re I read. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Half time. And uh, Fulham don't like Mondays, but the good news for the Cottagers is that every time you think that Brentford have it in the bag, you quickly find that the bag's got a hole in it. They do lead at the breakthrough, Janolt's effort, but this story isn't finished yet. The only reason that it's level is because Mark Flecken has had to make a couple of saves. He had a double one from Rhys Nelson and one from Smith Rowe right at the very end, which means that... Brentford's lead is preserved at half-time. Fulham nil, Brentford won. Well, that was electric. We're very low level. I wouldn't say we're exactly pitch level, but not far above it. And you could see just the speed of a Premier League game. They came out of the blocks. Both teams really flying. Fulham took the initiative, but couldn't find the finish. Then out of nowhere, Vitaly Janel with an absolute rocket. 
It is a great strike. I just want to assess Danny Murphy, uh, Burnt Leno's. I know you're going to say yeah. Because because as Yanelt's about to shoot, Burnt Leno is jumping in the air, setting his feet. So by the time he plants his feet, the shot is already on its way. He can't take a step, which he needs to do before the dive. It's bad goalkeeping. Do you know what? I completely understand where you're coming from. The only thing when you watch it sometimes on a replay, you don't understand. I know we saw it live, but the speed that ball was hit at. So I would look at it more to say, would Allison save it? Probably. Yep. But is it a mistake? No. Because it's such a good hit. It's a brilliant hit and it's yep. travelling. And you're right, the footwork, he did seem planted. And he's not, there are keepers bigger than him. You know, when you're talking about the top keepers and not in, in the Premier League and all around Europe, you would say they'd probably save that. And even Leno is best, but you know, we've seen him play really. I'm not criticising him, we're allowed to let a goal in, but yeah, he might be a little bit disappointed. It's a difficult one to take away from the quality of the strike, but his hand was close to it and he did, he did plant himself. You're right, it was a good spot. Yeah, I, I think that. What he'd be frustrated with is that he doesn't actually, I don't think he needs to jump up and plant his feet. No. He needs to keep feet on the ground. And I'm no goalkeeper, I'm no goalkeeper coach. No, but, but I know what you mean. You can see a keeper when he moves his feet, then dies. Yeah. And he didn't. Yeah, step across lawns. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, and, and, yeah. and I think he might have saved it. I think the keeper coach will look at it and, I and, think so, and yeah. they'll have a review of it. But take nothing away from the strike. He, he's, he's put it in a position of the goal where it's going to be very difficult to save it's going to be a brilliant save well is it true oh. and also when you hit a ball like that and it's it's not got any bend either way it's always doing a little bit in the air you know a little mm. bit of left to right a little bit of left to right and the keepers are, it's harder for them now with the way the balls are it reminded me of a strike when Fowler used to do it brilliantly with very little back lift on his left foot and I saw him I saw him do that so many times where he, he, it's hit and it stays hit and the keeper don't doesn't get them because of the speed it's going at and that's the only thing I'd let the keeper off a little bit with but I know I do know what you mean going back to the original point uh, Mbermo we've given the big build up he's been quiet because Robinson and Bassey have dealt with him quite well I think uh, Mbermo he was on the deck he'd been I think he felt he'd been fouled in the build up to the goal so uh, he had no part in that whatsoever but he's been largely quiet Mbermo hasn't he Credit, credit, as you said to Robinson, very athletic, very ready for him. Mm. You can see the intensity. We're so close to Robinson. Yeah. Powerful lad. Physical. Every oh. time he sees him, we're not near him. He's like, where is he? And gets back in. The other thing is, as well, like any forward player, you rely on service. And I've seen quite a bit of Brentford this year. And I've, I'm a big fan of what he does. I like the, I like lots of what they do. But their, their possession play and their playing through the lines hasn't been particularly good. I think Fulham have stopped them quite well. And Mbuomo needs a bit more service. He's not had much quality to him high up the pitch for him to do his little, you know how he's good, he manipulates the ball and chops and uses his skill. He's not been in the final third very often. Uh, Fulham, as we said before the game, played some really good stuff. There was a 17 minutes gone, a wonderful ball from Anderson on the right-hand side into the middle of the pitch for Emil Smith-Rowe, who's taking up some great positions, wants the ball, receives the ball. There's a lot to love about Fulham, but what's going wrong when they get in the box? hardest thing in the world is scoring goals and that's why the, the players who do it most often get the most money you know simply as that mm. simple as that when you get in the final third it's calmness decision making the right choice technical one and, and, and seeing the pass all those things I mean Robinson got himself in a brilliant position made the wrong choice uh, Neil Smith Rowe has done it once or twice he's got in brilliant little positions maybe taking a bit too long to get his shot off Reese Nelson went for the near post when really maybe should have gone for the the far post is one, but there's a reason that Fulham always end up in a mid midish table type position because even when they play well, they struggle to kill off teams and score lots of goals, as do lots of the other teams who aren't in the top six or seven. It's that killer instinct, you know what yep. I mean? And they need to do better at it because the levels of play we're seeing from Fulham is as good as I've seen a Fulham team in a long, long time. And it's a shame that they're not getting more end product. Yeah, it has been thoroughly entertaining. Vitali, he comes from Germany and now he is a beat. That's what the Brentford fans were singing. Doesn't score many goals. He scored his first of the season tonight and it's an absolute banger. And it means that at half-time on game night on Talk Sport, it's Fulham nil, Brentford 1. 
Monday game night on Talk Sport with Labrooks. Supercharge your odds with our odds boost button. Selected market supplies to first fifty pounds of stake. Terms apply. Eighteen plus. Gamblerware.org. Settle down for a night of crime. Witness a heist. Follow a car chase. Eat too much popcorn. Meet a mafia boss. Join in on a bank robbery. Think about making a cup of tea. <sighs> Be too comfortable to get up. For less. Selected IKEA sofas are now at a new lower price, along with thousands of other products. IKEA, the wonderful everyday. <laughs> I'm coming in. Get more spice in your life with the McSpicy at McDonald's. With 100% chicken breast in a spicy, crispy coating, the McSpicy is coming in hot. Oh, oh, yeah. I feel like it's kicking in now. Served up at 11 a.m. We all fantasize about our perfect home. Sipping a morning coffee out on the terrace. Good morning, Mr. Squirrel. Morning. The kids building a treehouse in the garden. But come on, this isn't real. Listen, if you're serious about making your fantasy a reality, find out what your home is worth instantly with a free online valuation estimate. Get real about moving. Get on the market. Most common time to obtain an online quote between 1st of April 2024 and 30th of June 2024 was under three minutes. Excludes Northern Ireland. Football is back and it's game on. Get the ultimate football coverage with the Suns free pullout. Goals! With the best writers pitch side for in-depth match reports, it's all about goals! And with unrivaled news from the Premier League to League Two, it has to be goals! Stay up to date on all the latest football action. Get your free copy of Goals every Saturday, Sunday and Monday, only in the sun. You don't just check in to a village hotel. You work out. You jump in. You play on. You tuck in and drink up. Village Hotels, 33 locations with everything under one roof. A huge gym with pool and great membership opportunities. And a buzzing pub and grill with delicious food, ice cold beers and live sport. Check out villagehotels.com and work out, stay, meet and play. Screwfix Sprint delivers from store to door in 60 minutes or less. So, wherever the job, you can do it with less faffing and more fixing. Less driving, more drilling. So don't break your stride. Screwfix Sprint. Order now exclusively on a Screwfix app. £5 delivery charge, no minimum spend. Don't stop. Sprint. Conditions and geographical restrictions apply. Selected products. At Betfair, we're about finding different ways to play. Like with our 90-minute guarantee. We've all been there. The clock ticks over into 90 minutes, and then a speculative cross into the box ricochets off a knee and goes in, ruining your bet. But with Betfair's 90-minute guarantee, if your bet is winning at 90 minutes or full-time, we pay out. Betfair. Play different. Applies to match odds 90 market or markets with the 90 icon. Sportsbook exclusive. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. Monday game night on Talk Sport with Enterprise Rent a Car. Rent from the best lineup in the UK. Enterprise has 450 branches with all the vehicles your business needs. Exclusive commentary of massive Monday night games. And it's got in! Would you believe it? The biggest and best football on the radio. Game night on Talk Sport. Well, a bit of a legend as a, a player and a coach here at Fulham. Lewis Poamorte is on the pitch and he's uh, just coming around. He just waved to us. How sweet is that? FA Cup first round, Chesham <laughs> nil, Lincoln City three. They're into the final five minutes of the 90 there. Let's get the halftime odds with Labrooks. Odds update on Talk Sport with Labrooks. Get money back as a free bet up to £10 if one leg of your football 5 plus hacker lets you down. Pre match straight line hackers only. Odds are 3 to 1 or greater. 18 plus gamblerware.org. It's Fulham nil. Brentford 1. Brentford are 11 to 10 to win. Fulham are 13 to 5. The draw is 11 to 5. Emil Smith Road to score or assist was 9 to 4. That's now been price boosted to 3 to 1. Raul Jimenez to score a header is 12 to 1. That's the latest odds with Labrooks. Odds update on Talk Sport with Labrooks. Supercharge your odds with our odds boost button. Selected market supplies the first £50 pounds of stake. Terms apply. 18 plus. Gamblerware.org. Now Man City are in uh, Lisbon to face Sporting live on Talk Sport tomorrow evening in the Champions League. And they're going to come face to face with Ruben Amarim who takes over as Manchester United manager 
later this month. The sporting boss only spoke in Portuguese to the media today, but batted away suggestions that this match will be an accurate demonstration of whether he can be a success at Old Trafford. My focus, as I said, is in winning the match tomorrow and winning it for Sporting. Then, the conclusions that people will draw from this uh, match will, is, are not important for me because if it is a very negative outcome, the expectations will drop. And I think that's not exactly a poor starting point when I start with Manchester United. If we win tomorrow, people will think that the new Alex Ferguson has arrived. And of course, it will be difficult to live up to that expectation. So regardless of what the conclusions that people will draw tomorrow, I'm not interested in them. What I'm interested in is to win the match, have a good uh, departure from Alvalade, then win in Braga, and after that, start a new life in Manchester United. So we could have one situation or the other. Well, it says the right things, Ruben Amarim. I'm just wondering, Danny Murphy, is it, would it be wise, is it going to be good for him if they win tomorrow sporting? Well, will that mean the expectations are going to go through the roof? I think the expectation with some people will rise. Not with people who understand football, because they'll understand it's a completely different team in a completely different country, playing a weakened Man City team in a different climate and all the different things that come with it. I think it bears no relevance on whether he's going to be successful at Manchester United or not. I think it's it's actually a silly question, really. I'm surprised at you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it is. I know what you're you know like, what yeah. will happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if they just say they win sporting tomorrow, yeah. And all of a sudden they'll be like, oh, hang on, this guy, he's got the better of Pep Guardiola. Well, Iriola, just... Iriola should be the manager of Man U then, shouldn't he? Maybe you should. <laughs> Maybe they might change their mind. <laughs> and by the way, when you, you know what I mean, though, don't you? No, absolutely, yeah. But that's how, it's so knee-jerk. Yeah. It's so in the now. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we'll see what happens. Man City have got their injury crisis. We'll see who's back for them. I mean, tomorrow. the flip thing is, if they lose, if, if City beat them 4-0, is he the wrong choice then? <laughs> that will be the reaction, you're right. Uh, let's get an FA Cup goal at Chesham. Ian Abrams. Chesham nil, Lincoln City 4, set up by Bailey Canamartri down the left-hand side. He played the ball into the middle and then uh, there was real sort of, not really sure what happened because the Chesham defence were running back on the Lincoln striker. Lincoln striker tripped over and it went in in the end off of the uh, Chesham defender. So it was a real... Comedy of errors. It's an own goal. It's all over now. It's Chester nil, Lincoln four. Uh, by the way, you uh, you two were talking about Portuguese managers, Marco Silva, Ruben Amorim. I think you forgot the guy third in the table, third in the Premier League table. Another magic moment from the weekend. A brilliant win for Nottingham Forest to go third under Nuno. Yeah, but he's a goalkeeper. Doesn't count, does it? What? Goalkeepers as managers, you can't have that. All right. I thought I had voices in my head for a second. <laughs> I wouldn't then. have done that. Turn around. You did that without moving your lips. <laughs> um, just shows you how important a coach can be in organising a tactical setup and understanding what the team needs on any given day. It's, the coach is so important, honestly. You need some decent players, and Forest have got them, of course they are, but so imperative that the coach knows how to get the best from his team and set them up which brings out their strengths and Forrest have got that at the moment well Fulham need it in this second half the players are ready for the next 45 on game night on Talk Sports where it's Fulham nil Brentford 1 here's your second half with Danny Murphy and your commentator on Talk Sports Sam Mathface you know, Spiritual Santos has also been in a very good mood in the uh, last few weeks and so he should be as well they've been absolutely Terrific Nottingham Forest. And I mentioned that Fulham would be the new Nottingham Forest if they'd put their chances away and won the games that maybe they should have done this season, but they haven't. And as a result, they are further down the table in mid table and they are behind here. What have they got to do in the second half in order to rectify the scoreboard? Danny Murphy. You said in the first half they just got to keep doing what they're doing. Well, in terms of getting into the final area, getting some really dangerous areas on the pitch, keep doing that. And then try and just calm yourself in those moments and make the decision making better. Try and be a bit more clinical. But the more often you get in there, Sam, more chance something's going to happen. And they've got a good bench as well, let's be honest. They've got players on the bench who can make things happen. So 
all is not lost for Fulham, that's for sure. Well, we've got 45 minutes, a big 45 minutes to come. White shirts, black shorts, white socks for the home team who have a free kick against Brentford all in green with yellow trim and numbers. And the home team attacking the goal away to our right. And they have a free kick over on the first uh, far side in the first few minutes of the second half. Andres Pereira sends it into the centre. It's blocked by Ruslav and then it's cleared away by Damsgaard. Back towards the left channel for Robinson. It's collected by Jimenez. Robinson's got it back again just down the side of the centre circle. And Fulham dominating possession at the start of the second half as they did pretty much throughout the first. Iwobi is in an offside position though and the flag has gone up on this near touchline. It's going to be a free kick in the right fullback position for Brentford. Fulham with Leno in goal, Tete, Anderson, Bassi and Robinson the back four. Pereira and Berger as the holding midfield players. Nelson and Iwobi on the flanks. Smith Rowe in the 10 and Jimenez leading the line. For Brentford they've got Mark Flecken in goal. Made a double save from Nelson in that first half. Mads Roslev at right back. Pinnock, Collins and Van den Berg at left back. Yano, who scored an absolute belter to put Brentford in front, and Norgard holding in midfield. Norgard's been particularly good. Damsgaard behind. Visa, who leads the line, and then Bermo and King Lewis Potter have been pretty quiet on the flanks so far. 1 0 to Brentford, who have possession with Johan Wissa now down the right side. He's bundling into Bassi, gives away a free kick, or does he? Sure, well, not making that particularly clear, and the free kick eventually is now given and he will take it on the edge of the penalty area <laughs> he'd already escaped halfway up the pitch with the ball he could have just played <laughs> on ball back with Bernd Leno and now across to Anderson Fulham's one win in 34 years here over Brentford saw them score a first minute opener and a 90th minute winner that was two years ago and all three Fulham goal scorers are now elsewhere and it may not be the biggest or the most passionate London derby, but Fulham against Brentford is certainly not usually a game to be missed. Do you know what? When all the years I was here, I wasn't really made aware of it. Well, it's a little bit different oh. depending on what side of the divide you're on as Bassi gets there ahead of Witter. For Fulham, I think they look towards Chelsea yeah. a lot more than they look to anyone yeah. else. But for Brentford, because of the fact that these two spent a lot of time deep in the muck and weeds of the EFL in League 1 and League 2 together during the 80s and 90s. Well, I played against Brentford many times in the low league. We actually played them when we beat them in the League 1 playoff final to get in the championship. That was crew. crew, yeah? Yeah. But in terms of Fulham have gone one way and gone all the way to the Premier League and Brentford were playing catch-up for many, many years after that. Uh, and eventually, wow. obviously, they got there. Obviously, Fulham beat them in the final of the championship playoff as well which were added to the animosity but it's very much from a Brentford direction Nelson into Iwobi trying to take the ball onto the right foot who shoots towards the far corner and he just dragged it three yards wide of the right hand upright and it trundles behind and away for a goal kick do you know what it's not an easy one but a little bit of lack of technique on that from Iwobi drags it he's got to really concentrate on it and through the ball not across the ball there great play from Reese Nelson though nice and positive again nice and sharp causing problems being direct get the ball to him as often as you can you switch sides yeah comfortable it, either side does it matter what side he's on but you just said it he's comfortable on both I think Iwobi prefer, prefers yeah, to come from that left hand well, side well he had a good spell of for a while on the right hand yeah. side if you remember well he played everywhere for Everton didn't he I mean he did really well for them here is Anderson. Long ball forward up towards Jimenez. So Pinnock will win the header. It's headed down and into the midfield where Smith Rowe picks it up, centre circle. Pushes it on into Pereira. That's the ball. Pereira plays it in the inside channel, finds Nelson. Nelson cuts in past Van der Berg. Sets up Jimenez. He's going in on goal. He's bundled to the floor by Nathan Collins. The referee says play on. And the ball comes out to the near touchline and it's kept in by Anderson. Does well. Pereira picks it up. Funnels it down the right. Tete trying to weave his way into a crossing position, but he's blocked by Vandenberg. Goes out of play and away for a throw on this near side, and it's going to be a throw in. Do you know what, Sam? That was a four ball from Pereira. Nelson was in, and he plays it short of him, and then he has to try and play him and Ezin. They're the little bits of quality I'm talking about. If, if Pereira just gets that pace of that ball right, Nelson's in for a one on one. That's the little difference in those areas. Pereira playing it into Jimenez this time. Down the side of the box. Again, he ends up on the ground. Again, it's Collins who comes away with the ball. And he's had his measure so far in the game. He played 50 minutes. The former Wolverhampton Wanderers centre-half. 
And he's released Damsgaard, whose control was good. Finds Viso, holds onto it despite pressure from Berger in the centre circle, right in the middle of that. And it goes out towards the far side. It's collected now by uh, Roerslav. Full time at Chesham, Ian Abrahams. Chesham nil, Lincoln City four, Lincoln ahead before half time through Moylan's brilliant goal. They added three more in the second half, but Grandall scored, so did Makama, and there was no goal by Ali Bailly as well. The biggest attendance here in our, nearly half a century for Chesham. Chesham nil, Lincoln four. Brentford might pose a problem, usually in these clashes, but actually in London derbies, Fulham have been pretty good so far in recent times they are unbeaten in each of their last five Premier League London derbies and have only lost tackle. one of their last eight top flight games against rivals from across the city big tackle one on halfway Bassi sent it wide onto the left Smith Rowe into the centre blocked by Norgard it's out for a corner you know what Norgard just did there in tracking him Smith Smith's run and not diving in and staying with him yard for yard and blocking the cross is a great example of the type of midfield work that should be done by every midfielder who plays in that role and isn't. I well, mentioned him a lot in the first half, just how good he is. And uh, it's out for a corner far side to be taken by Pereira. Right footed, sends the ball into the centre. Jimenez rises, didn't quite get up enough and head the ball, but it comes back out to Robinson, left side. Pereira's got it again, looks to recycle it. It's a deep one into the box. Again, Collins is there. He's been a colossus at the back so far for Brentford. And then as Iwobi tries to get hold of the ball, he's pushing the back by Wiesa, it and it's going to be a free kick. Do you know what? Brentford, well, the more you watch Brentford, it's amazing how much they enjoy defending crosses and set plays. It's like they embrace it. Well, they're probably set, they're set up in a way where they have to do that a lot no, of the time. No, but it's still like a desire in what, when they do it. It's still a real concentration and commitment to the cause. You not love defending? Not really. Oh, I used to love defending. I did it because I had to. Yeah. I was a creator, not a destroyer, mate. <laughs> Here is uh, Jimenez towards the far post. He goes out of play. I was a destroyer because I couldn't create. <laughs> yeah. You know what it's like when you're playing Sunday football. If you're rubbish, you play at the back. I don't know what it's like now. No, of course you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Teed you up for that one, didn't I? <laughs> Uh, always enjoyable coming to the cottage, <laughs> even if you bring Danny Murphy with you. Uh, it has the uh, ability to blend the authenticity of proper old school football and the infrastructure that the Premier League now demands. I mean, I'm pleased that we don't have to pay for a seat in the stand opposite because uh, apparently it's quite pricey, but it looks good. It'd be good if someone actually sat in it. It does look great, doesn't it? Yeah. Apparently it's got a pool on top as well. I think it's on the side, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. I Maybe don't it's know. not there anymore. I, I haven't. I haven't got any. Uh, I haven't got enough money to go over there and, <laughs> and get a seat and have a look. It'd be a bit nippy to go in there and your budgie smugglers yeah, on it tonight. It would. Whoa. It would. I mean, do you own a pair of them? A budgie smugglers? Mm. No. Oh. I thought you'd be the type to be Did honest. You? Yeah. yeah. I bet that's what's on your dating profile picture. <laughs> Here is uh, oh, Sander Berg, right on the edge of the... Uh, oh, he's given away by Bassi, and he's uh, allowed the ball to run straight to Wissa, and then he's had to reconnect and get it back to Bernd Leno before it causes a problem. Bernd Leno's got it back at his feet, and Fulham have the control of the possession again. 55 gone. Fulham nil, Brentford won. And uh, Brentford now high-pressing from the front, causing problems for... Marco Silva's team struggling to oh. play out but when they do get out there's space for Emil Smith-Rowe and he immediately sends it out to the left he's driven and won't be a little bit wide but he's come back in towards the edge of the penalty area cuts on his right no. foot strikes the ball it's blocked by Roeslev and then it bounces kindly for Imbermo and he leads the counter charge now he runs to the centre circle Wiesa wants the ball played early he gets it edge of the penalty area tries to take on Anderson he's immediately surrounded by Tete and Anderson and they stop him from coming in field but Keen Lewis Potter takes over now down the side of the box left side for Brentford he sort of turned himself into a bit of a knot there and then went backwards rather than forwards and Brentford start again well if you go back a minute it will be there's five men in the box he cuts back on his... Oh, here we go. Keen Lewis Potter in behind Anderson down the left side of the penalty area and lays the ball in towards the near post and Tete 
slides, read it brilliantly, and nudges it behind and away for a Brentford corner. But all his pressure's gone from Iwobi's really poor choice in the final third. He's got loads of men in the box, loads of different choices he can make, and he cuts back and decides to try and shoot from a ridiculously acute angle. It gets blocked, and then they're on the counter-attack. Now they're nearly 2 nil down. <coughs> 56 minutes on the clock, Damsgaard just uh, having a word with those inside the penalty area that have joined the attack. Roslav is on the edge of the box. Jan out, waiting there too. Marking zone Lee here at Fulham. And lots of green shirts towards the back edge of the penalty area and looking to come and attack this ball from Damsgaard right underneath the goalkeeper, flicked away by Tessie, who again glanced it clear. Jimenez sends it forward. Smith Rowe trying to get oh, there. Oh, almost got there just before Roslav, who left a little bit in on him, and he's going to get booked, I think. Yeah, it's right a the first one it's of the yellow. day. Yellow card. What they call a good yellow, isn't it? Take him on for the team because Mill Smith Rowe, he probably actually wouldn't have got onto the ball, but he nicked it. Millisecond ahead of uh, Roslav coming across. I'd actually like to see Traore come on as a striker. Play down the middle yeah. and just, uh, just keep try running and stretch in behind. Them. Yeah. Well, he's on the bench and someone is getting ready over on that far side. There's a shirt ready and prime for action. And Fulham have the ball on the near side. We're about to hit the hour mark on Talk Sport. And it's 1 0 to Brentford away at Craven Cottage. Iwobi has it four steps back from the left-hand angle of the penalty area that they're attacking away to our right. Back into Sander Berger and then on to Andreas Pereira, played in Brazil's most recent qualification game in the World Cup. Plays it back to halfway. Anderson, Bassi, out to the left and Robinson. Robinson down towards the byline, plays it against Jan out, claims that it's a goal kick and that's what's given by Stuart Outwell. Another midfield run, recovery run. Jan out, spotting danger. Robinson coming inside from out to in, left back. Getting breaking lines, trying to cause problems. What's the central midfielder do? Spot the danger, match the run. Get a good block in. Gets a bit of luck on the ricochet and gets a goal kick. Terrific from the two midfield boys. From yes, Brentford. to Fulham, nil. Brentford one, live on Talk Sport. With Sky Sports, don't forget you can stream the biggest Premier League games available on no contract with now like Fulham versus Brentford live right now search now sports here is Norgard helping it out into Keane Lewis Potter there's a bit of space for him on this left hand side he's cutting right footed and trying to bend one in the top corner hasn't quite got it right just gone over the bar by about four or five yards but there was a lot of space on this near touch line for Keane Lewis Potter it's a good break from Brentford Norgard does brilliantly well to move his feet to actually get this pass to Lewis Potter little bit predictable on his right foot he's going to come in Tete's position is not bad misses by quite a mile quite a mile quite, quite a mile quite a bit I was going to say I'm a country mile but it wasn't <laughs> here is uh, George Jimenez touches it brilliantly back towards Andreas Pereira the tackle from Collins the ball spills out to the far side it's re configured by Nelson he turns and runs up to the edge of the box and sends it into Robinson Smith Rowe a little tap pass towards the left and they're building up again on the edge of the penalty area but Pereira who's wasted a couple of balls tonight yeah, has been. just given the ball away to him Burmo it's not been his best game that's for sure Nelson Fulham have it back again a yard in from the left touch line it's with Anthony Robinson Robinson playing it to Berger Berger on to Anderson Anderson forward Iwobi on the edge of the D tries to probe everybody in green almost behind the ball and packed on the edge of the box it's really tight there Anderson back to Iwobi on to the right Fulham on the hunt for an equaliser back to Anderson no Smith Rowe picks it up goes away from Damsgaard looks for the return played into Andreas Pereira couldn't find the pass cleared away but again Fulham smother them get it back Pound them, turn it over, then go on the hunt. Pereira in from the left touch line, finds Smith Rowe. He swivels, plays done it out it. to Nelson, who's done the fullback, produces a cross, can't get an accurate one into the head of Iwobi or Jimenez, and it goes through to the other side. Retrieved by Kenny Tete, and still Fulham 
applying the pressure still Fulham on the front foot still Fulham on the hunt for an equalising goal which they will feel they deserve in the game as it goes to Nelson Nelson across to Berger back to Smith Rowe but a space for him Anderson encouraged to shoot from distance instead he plays it to the edge of the penalty area Tete sends it wide Iwobi back to Anderson again he'll drip this into the box it's a deep one Jimenez underneath it oh they all left it and they went straight out of play well, three, the of the, three of them trying to get hold of it yeah, they're all going the each other's ball. way I always think when you watch a team probe be patient go from side to side go in go back go out go wide I always look and think who's going to take the responsibility to be the one to hit the killer pass to be the one to try and make something happen and I never like it to be centre half. I always think the midfielders should be the ones who go I'm going to be the one because that's your job you're a creator and as soon as centre halves are trying to create, I think you're, you're, you're climbing a mountain. 1 0 to Brentford. And they'll be delighted if they can get all three points here tonight. And they usually uh, help with the entertainment factor. They're nine in the Bit League games and now featured a total of 37 goals, which eclipses every other team in the division. But usually both teams score. They have done in 10 of Brentford's last 11 matches. He's got to be thinking of changes. Both teams have scored in seven of Fulham's last eight. We weren't expecting a quiet night in front of goal, but we've only got the one goal so far. Still, I was right, though. There's a shot. Didn't get a nil-nil. Didn't get a nil-nil. <laughs> can't remember the last time we had a nil-nil on a Monday night. Let's invent fixtures like we did a couple of weeks Brighton ago. Brighton Wolves. Uh, Adama Traore is going to come on for Andres Pereira yeah, in a few sense. minutes, we think. Makes sense. Here is Tete. Infield. Jimenez back to goal, trying to turn and roll Pinnock. Keeps hold of it well, shuffles it back into the path of uh, Berger, who spreads the play out towards the right, wide right. It won't be with a cross, it's aimed towards Pereira, wasn't high enough for him. And then goes out of the penalty area, picked up by Wissa, who bundled Berger off the ball, and then Norgard floats the ball into the right channel, looking for Burma, but that's going to go out of play. It's unlucky. Well, the idea was right from Christian Norgard. I have to say, Pinnock and uh, Collins, super positional play willingness to get on get back in right position and head the ball and volley and block it and clear it so it was a decent ball in from a Wobi the other thing they do is they they allow Janot to drop into the back line if they don't have the ball gives them an extra man yeah. in there here is uh, Nelson far side looking to take the ball out of the sky and run at Rurslab he goes backwards to Robinson now Smith Rowe on it again into Nelson those two certainly dictating the play and trying oh. to make something happen it's a lovely run by Nelson and then back to Smith Rowe inside the penalty area left corner of it tries to tee it up and he tees it up for Anderson Anderson sends it wide Iwobi right corner of the box on the other side now a lot of side to side for Fulham and not much penetration so much of the football but not enough clear cut chances Iwobi goes on the outside tries to get the cross in it's a good cross towards the far post and Inbermo puts it behind and it goes out for another corner you know what frustrates me listening to fans get frustrated and annoyed because the team's patient and probing and pressing we Fulham have pinned them back they're having a really good second half they're probing and getting in really great areas some good defending going on but some of the fans get frustrated and start shouting stupid things it's so annoying one minute uh, before we uh, get that change I think because uh, Adama Traore has got uh, is kit ready here is Pereira into the oh. near post and it goes almost it's snuck into the goal from Pereira and Flecken had to punch it clear from the his corners have been post. poor Sam haven't they really and I, and I, I'm not sure he's meant to do that but from I mean, substitution off comes Andreas Pereira and on comes Adama Traore and coming on number 11 shirt. Adama Traore tightly wedged into his shorts and as a result of that his muscles are bulging through the Iwobi Fulham shirt Iwobi sent the mid I think yeah Iwobi will go into a, a more central position and Adama Traore will come out to the right Nelson will go out on the left again from that change which has seen Adama Traore come on only one goal this season he's as fast as an F1 car but sometimes <laughs> you know, I just uh, Waits too long to apply the brakes. 
but he's certainly a threat especially in behind and Anderson's array of passing right. will help that right. chance right. to get him in now down the right side up towards uh, Jimenez then Iwobi then on to Traore who runs at the Brentford defence down the right side across to the box did it hit a hand referee says no and it goes through to the goalkeeper's arms should have ran past I'm not sure why he doesn't use his pace there trying to burst past him well he got to the edge of the box went to try and cross it and then no it hit the midriff didn't it I mean the, the arms were tucked in from Janolt not going to be penalised that one here is Robinson halfway being trapped by Inverno 67 minutes on the clock 1-0 to Brentford on Talk Sport Nelson dancing down that left touchline brilliant pace gets wow. the ball and lovely cross in towards Jimenez can't get a firm head on it comes out to the edge of the box Tete encouraged to shoot does shoot straight down the throat of Flecken what a run down that left hand side by Nelson I mean he had Mbermo on toast and he's no slouch he went skating past two Brentford green shirts got to the far line produced a cross just a little bit too high for Jimenez what another brilliant defensive header though to Van der Berg. well there's been a few of those tonight and they're off you know they're four big lads in that defence it's outstanding header though isn't it Come with... Van der Berg's a big tall slender unit with flame coloured hair Roslav big strapping Dane at right back and then the two centre halves Collins the thick set Irishman and Ethan Pinnock who have so far kept Fulham at bay 1-0 to Brentford he's here, he's here Tete, halfway line sends it out to Adama Traore Traore runs at Vandenberg gets to the edge of the penalty area cuts back in on his left foot delivers a cross into the box headed away by Pinnock comes out as far as Iwobi Iwobi on the edge of the area tries to get onto his left foot no, drives the ball no, goal no, again no, it's too no. close to the goalkeeper and it's an easy catch for Mark Flecken Currently Fulham nil, Brentford one. The latest odds head to Labricks, where right now you can get Fulham at five to one. Brentford are eleven to eight on the draw, eleven to five. It's all thanks to Labricks. Eighteen plus. Be gamble aware. You were saying no, no, no. Well, no, when Iwobi got the ball, that's the second time he's done that. What's he got to do better? I just think you've got to understand your percentages. When, when, he's ne when was when did Iwobi last score a 25, 30 yard left foot shot? Here is uh, Emil Smith Rowe out to the left, and it's in towards Jimenez again. Oh, Smith Rowe started that move, combined well with Arobi, but couldn't finish it off because Jimenez's ball back to him wasn't great. And here is uh, Smith Rowe again on the left side of the area, twisting, turning, trying to find a bit of room, which is being squeezed out by Ball Brentford. It's a good ball by Robinson into Iwobi on the edge of the area, but they've gone back on the outside again. Robinson with a cross this time. Again, it's meat and drink to those centre halves. It's a great ball away. as well. Comes out by Tete. Tete sends it forward and it's into the air and it's caught by the goalkeeper. I think it went behind. It's out for a corner. It's a good ball, but there's one person in there. Yeah, true. <laughs> the, um, the Iwobi shot felt a bit desperate. You don't, there's so much time left, you don't want to get that feeling where you're taking pop shots from 25, 30 yards on your weak foot. Just keep working it, keep probing, the chance will come. Damsgaard about to be withdrawn and replaced by Matthijs Jensen. A bit more def I mean, Jensen's kind of, he's a good footballer, but he's a bit yeah. more defensive minded, isn't he, than Damsgaard? Here is uh, the corner for Fulham looking for that equaliser Nelson sends the ball towards the back edge of the six yard box it eludes everybody comes back out of Robinson who's on the other side sends a cross in Tete with a header it's heading towards the far corner before Collins comes across and clears it it only reaches the perimeter of the box on the right hand side and the forceful figure of Adama Traore is bustling way into the box he sets it back towards Bassi oh, who's right footed yeah. shot again is too close to the goalkeeper needed more composure needed to get it for either side of uh, the goalkeeper maybe he probably wasn't the executioner that you wanted did well Traore ended up finding a good pass to the edge of the box Bassi just needs to connect better ends up being a daisy cutter typical centre half finish that one 1-0 one and Brentford having to repel a lot of heavy weather coming their way 
It's calm tired. though. It's calm the way they defend. They oh, don't it's panic. It's not last ditch. It's they're, they they seemingly look in control, don't yeah. they? They hold themselves well. They're all well drilled. They know their position. Their shape is compact and tight. And they know when to make the challenge and when to sit off. They know when to leap and when to hold their ground. And Fulham maybe just getting a little bit erratic now as they look to try and force their way back into the game. Here's Anthony Robinson. He received it but was never in full command of it. And dispossessed and the ball repels to the far side. Quickly they take the throw. Oh, and before they can take it, the referee stopped the game because he wants to make a substitution. Substitution coming off number and 24. here's that substitution we told you about 24 and coming on number Damsgaard eight, for eight Matthias Jensen and there's a couple of changes here for Fulham, Fulham. substitution Rodrigo Munez seven, comes Raul on Jimenez. Raul Jimenez is coming off Rodrigo Munez coming on who scored once this season so far and the other change is going to be the withdrawal Well, I'm not entirely sure who it is who's uh, taking off because uh, those numbers don't make sense to me. Keen Lewis, Keen Lewis Potter coming off for Brentford. Number 14, Fabio Carvalho. And on comes Fabio Carvalho, who's not exactly the world's most popular man here. Two goals this season against Wolves and Leighton Orient. £22.5 million pounds, uh, from Liverpool. And Fulham do get a slice of that, by the way. He came up through the Fulham Academy and Liverpool did a good deal with Fulham which meant that when they sold him to Brentford, Fulham got a sizeable slice of the action. But it doesn't mean he's particularly pos Fulham popular. Fulham coming off number two, Kenny Tete. And comes Kenny Tete. And coming on number 21, Timothy and Kim Castagna comes on after a thigh injury to replace him. So three changes now have been made for off. Number seven, Raul Fulham. Jimenez. And, and coming on number nine, Rodrigo Nunes. I'd like to have seen Munez join Jimenez or go whoever just put two up top against the two centre half see if it can cause him a different problem yeah well instead you've got Adama Traore Munez Smith-Rowe Iwobi and Nelson on and they're being charged with making the difference he's going to shoot Anderson shooting from distance and missing by distance I think it was seven yards or eight yards wide of the right hand he was upright. 40 37 or 40 yards out then I mean, if I was playing and my centre-half did that, I'd probably get sent off for what I said to him. Well, don't say it now. What the hell is he thinking? Was Does he like, think he's that good? He can score from 38 yards or whatever it was. Come on. It's been a long time since he uh, scored a goal. He's just brain dead. Mark Anderson doesn't score much, but he did score against Brentford at the beginning of last season. I don't think it was from 40 yards. I couldn't be a manager. I'd absolutely lose it every day. I'd, I'd, I'd have nowhere. As opposed to now, <laughs> obviously. <we're... laughs> oh, there is Vandenberg. Charging up over halfway. Do you think he'd be more miserable as a manager? Oh, God, yeah. How are you? Carvalho. You can tell he's got the ball because the boos are doing the rounds at the cottage. 15 to go. And it's 1-0 to the opponents from down the road in uh, Hounslow well that's been given away cheaply by Roslam and that's allowed Fulham to go on the break and, and Brentford have got to scurry back and get back into shape quickly ball picked up on the left hand side Good play. Nelson did well but Carvalho getting back to help out his teammate did pretty well too now, it wasn't announced on the uh, Tannoy, but I think Kevin Sharder has come onto the pitch here as well. And he's replaced Johan Vissa here on the far side. Nelson has it, gets on the edge of the penalty here. Right footed shot in towards the near post, and Smith Rowe couldn't connect with it. He missed Collins it, yeah. away, and it's out of play and away for a corner. They've had that two or three times, you know, tonight, where the cross has actually found a man, but they haven't connected properly with the ball. corner over on the far side the VAR did check that penalty by the way when it hit uh, Jan Out's arm they've told us that uh, his arm was tucked into his body that's why they didn't give it 
Here's the corner in towards the near post. Tricked by Adama Traore, tried to travel it through the box, which was congested. That six-yard box had more people in it than a tube carriage and rush hour. <laughs> it's not bad. Iwobi, out to Anderson. Back into Iwobi again, forward to Adama Traore. It's flicked out towards the far side, and uh, Smith Rowe couldn't quite reach it properly. He has got it back to Robinson, and they look to build again. Out it goes to Nelson. Nelson travels at pace, plays it into Robinson, Brilliant. who's crossed into the box. He's not going to be met by anyone in white. Should be. By Vandenberg. They've lacked a little bit of height, though, in there now. Danny with the taking off of Jimenez. Here is Nelson. Left side, approaching the box, faces up Norgard, goes on the outside, gets to the byline, then has to turn away because he ran into Roeslev. Bit of space for Robinson. Can he get the cross in? He's hesitated, he's waited, he's looked for Smith Rowe. Intricate on the edge of the box, finds Nelson. Back out towards the near side, Timothy Castagna. And then it's on to Adama Traore, who's on this near touchline, running towards the edge of the box, but then outfoxing himself with his feet, which were jumping over the ball like oh, Michael he's Flatley well. in Riverdance he does then get the cross in comes back to Iwobi and he sticks it into Bassi and again the pressure is on from this relentless Fulham team who can't find a goal even if they've dominated the possession in the match they deserve to get back in let's be honest Brentford have been brilliant defensively but Fulham have controlled the game probed pushed can't find that little bit of quality when they need to I think as the game goes on now and they can try and get Traore isolated Vandenberg down this side I don't know why Castagna is running into his space you know you need to leave him that space to use his pace and you've got Castagna running past him and filling the space Lincoln beat Chesham 4-0 in the FA Cup earlier tonight the statistics are quite marvellous for Fulham and on any other day this would look like an absolute tonking they have a greater share of the expected goals. They have 67% possession. There's 16 goal attempts to Brentford's three. There's seven attempts on target to Brentford's one. They've had more corner kicks, more free kicks, more everything, except for goals. And that's the problem. Ball cleared by Flecken, upfield. Carvalho, centre circle. For Brentford, Roeslav forward is cut out by Sander Berger and it goes out to the far touchline and Berger comes forward again. It's a good player, Sander Berger. Signed from Burnley in the summer at yeah. quite some cost. And he's an elegant footballer and they're on the hunt again here. 12 minutes to go. Nelson, Iwobi, trying to get into the box. He's surrounded by green shirts that work so hard. They're so fit, Brentford. Out it goes to Nelson again. Nelson trying to poke it into Iwobi. Iwobi stops the ball, back to goal, sets it back. Robinson, then on to Sander Berger again. Back out to the left once more. Collected by Smith Rowe, then on to Iwobi again. Robinson makes Brilliant. a dart in the inside left channel, pulls it back, looking for Iwobi. Across comes Jano, scoops it into the sky, and then Robinson allows it to go out, and it should go out for a corner. Roeslev's going to stop that. And then it's cleared by Norgard upfield, and then the referee oh, is going to give... Well, he's going to stop the game because he thinks that Roeslav has been hurt away to our right-hand side. I don't think by the tone of your voice there, Daniel, that you were quite convinced by that. Oh, I did. No, I take it back. Yeah. Although he is off the pitch. Listening to Fulham, nil, Brentford 1 on TalkSport with Enterprise Rent a car, whatever the mission, home or away. Enterprise helps over 120,000 people every day. And remember that the live football continues tomorrow on Talk Sport. We've got uh, Champions League football for you, Championship football tomorrow night as well on Talk Sport 2. Wednesday night, we've got an offering from the Champions League. Thursday night, both Tottenham and Manchester United are live on Talk Sport and Talk Sport 2. And Club Brugger against Aston Villa on Wednesday starts really early. Starts in the uh, drive programme with Andy Goldstein. We've got back-to-back -back Champions League games on Wednesday night. And then Saturday, now offering from the Premier League on Talk Sport, comes from Anfield, Liverpool against Aston Villa. I bet you're looking forward to that. That'll be a good game. Eight o'clock kickoff. I'm just really enjoying watching Liverpool play at the moment. You know, even when they have a bad spell in the game, you know they're going to 
turn it around or the tempo goes up or the subs get changed and all of a sudden there's a there's an impact I know he's got great options but the game second half Brighton was phenomenal to see well no one knows what the hell's going on here now because Roslav's gone off the pitch for treatment everyone stopped for a drink now they're giving an uncontested drop ball away to our right hand side I think Munoz doesn't know what is hey, going on um, and he's been sent away Roslev went off the pitch and now has come back on again when after having treatment he probably should be off the pitch for a couple of moments the referee hasn't communicated to anyone we've been waiting here for three minutes and we still haven't got the restart Blecken's still talking to Stuart Atwell I don't know what they're talking about we've got to get on with the game now they want to make a substitution and uh, Reese Nelson is coming off and Harry Wilson coming is coming 19, on Tom Kearney coming on and Emil Smith-Rowe going off so Smith-Rowe and Nelson coming off when they need a goal is that the right and decision? On number eight, Harry I think Emil Smith-Rowe's influence has become less I would have left Reese Nelson on but Harry Wilson is more than capable of getting a goal as we Tom know Kearney. and Tom Kearney's got a wonderful strike on him so why not change it they've, been, they've had what? 82 minutes to try and turn yeah. it around. Reese Nelson's been great. Yeah. And Emil Smith Rowe's been good as well. They've, all, they've actually played some really nice stuff. Well, the statistics tell you they've played brilliant football, apart from putting the ball in the back of the net. And they can't do everything, those two boys, but they've certainly done a lot for Fulham's cause tonight. Brentford holding on now to try and get what will be a precious three points. But remember, remember. I think they'd have been all right tonight if they had Mitrovic. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a ridiculous thing to say because he's gone, but you know there's having that many good balls into the box and they just don't have that presence. That this, I know Imanez not bad in the air, but Mitrovic was that power, wasn't he? That kind of that real presence that they had. Yeah, it's been two years nearly now, though. No, a year I and a half since, he's, since he departed. The worry you've got to get that, over it eventually, Dan. Yeah, that's true. I, I was listening to some fans talking about I was talking to some fans earlier about it, and they were still still missing him. Yeah, he's left a, a hole, that's for sure. Wilson's picked it up after a poor clearance. He's got space on the left for Iwobi. He feeds Iwobi, who's inside the box. Who played a terrible ball behind Kearney. He did. And it's one back by Castagna near side as Carvalho puts him under pressure. He sends it back to Adama Traore. Need a good delivery into the box here. There's not much height in there, but he'll try and search out Iwobi. It's flicked away by Roslev. It goes out for a corner. I think the concern I was going to say with Marcus Silver is, you know, if you're thinking of performance against Everton and performance tonight, control, not getting enough. Yeah, not getting enough from them. And they can't keep playing this well and not win, not winning, getting points. Late, there will be a spell where they don't play well. Late goals, there's great drama, the hallmark of Brentford and the Fulham games. 11 goals have been scored after the 75 minute mark in the last eight meetings between the two. There could be late drama here. Here is uh, Harry Wilson out to the far touchline goes back to Iwobi Iwobi into the box looking for Munez it's flicked by Castagna but it's too close to the goalkeeper and his looping header is gobbled up by the Dutch goalkeeper Fleckard and will be cleared away bit of a long hopeful ball into the box not enough pace on it to ever be a problem for anybody heading it just Bob running out of ideas a little bit Fulham surrendered two points last weekend when Everton scored a late injury time equaliser. They let a lead slip against West Ham late on. They were sunk by a late goal on opening night at Manchester United. Now they want a late goal of their own. Leno, inside his own half, right up to the edge of the 18-yard box. He plays it to Bassey. Bassey forward to Awobi. Robinson's got space left side. Good running, powerful from Iwobi. Then spreads the play intelligently. Robinson jinks his way into the box. A left-footed ball in towards the near post. Takes the flex for another corner. Good run by Robinson. Well spotted by Iwobi. It was a good run, but Iwobi may have played the wrong pass. Traore was in if he took the risk and tried to play through the lines rather than wide again. Well, Brentford about to record their first... Th points on the road this season Ben Mee about to come off the bench too ball aimed into the box header by Anderson again straight at Flecken and they have had a lot of shots on target I mentioned it earlier but those shots on target have largely been straight at yeah. Flecken it's too far away from the goal from Kearney really trying to score from anywhere penalty spot to the 18 yard with your head's difficult and Burmo coming off and uh, Ben Mee about to come on it's a late change for Brentford at the end of the game five minutes to go before the conclusion here 
Yeah, second home defeat of the season for Fulham, who are about to go four matches in the league without a win. Which is not a promising start, despite the fact that, let's be honest, they've probably been the better team in the match. And, you know, you think about what's to come next and how they will do going forward. They've got to start putting some points on the board in the next few weeks. Tottenham, Wolves, Palace, Brentford after Brentford's game. Brighton, then Arsenal, Liverpool and Chelsea in quick succession during December. They won't want to be getting to the Christmas period without already have picked up a few more wins. And Bermo goes off, Ben Mee is on and the extra defender is planted at the heart of that Brentford rear guard for the final four minutes of the game. Well, it's a 5v3 now, so what Fulham needs to do is actually make it a, a four up top. Where, who should they take? Should they take someone from the back line and put them on? Oh, giving away to Carvalho, edge of the penalty, a poor throw. He's trying to turn, doesn't manage to do it, gives the ball away. And now a chance for Fulham to break. It's touched by Kearney out to Robinson, who uses his rapid speed to drag them up the pitch. He moves into the left channel, feeds Iwobi, oh. who looks to get it in towards... Wilson but he wasn't accurate with the pass it comes back out to the edge of the box but it's won by Berger Castagna sizes one up hits the arm of me referee says play on Traore takes over tries to force it in can't do so Kearney left side Robinson joining the attack the ball ricochets it, it's come back to Traore who follows it connects to Castagna he bundles it through the box it bounces off the defender and goes behind it away for a corner it's like pinball in there that bit of quality that bit of calmness pick someone out Robinson's been terrific by the way yeah, I think I already makes the right decision in not trying to hit that one but poor from Castagna and he has only got limited options but it's still a poor ball and that's a poor ball as well the corner straight to the arms of Flecken there's a real lack of belief when they get in the final third that calmness and we saw some nice little snippets from Emil Smith-Rowe and Reese Nelson at times but that final bit where you need that calmness or that bit of quality what a great start to the season it is going to be for Brentford and their terrific record down the Thames it is about to continue free kick given against Carvalho not over yet not yet two minutes plus added time at the end of the 90 six I think we'll we'll see that's all we're expecting here's Iwobi far touch line I mean, I don't even know what he was trying to do there, but he has worked the ball to the near side. Castagna off in front of Traore's space again. Adama Traore trying to get down the right-hand side, gets the cross in, but it's blocked by Vandenberg. Did hit his hand, but the referee allows play on. Berger takes it forward, then plays it back out into the space where Traore is still waiting for it. He looks to take on Vandenberg, who's stood up to him well so far. Plays it back to Berger. Berger goes square, needing to get that into the box. Bassi shoots from distance, spilled by Flecken. There's no one there to pick up the pieces. Do you know what? The more I watch Sanderberg, and I really like him, he's a decent midfielder, but when he gets in the final third or into danger, he doesn't take responsibility. He doesn't take the responsibility of being creative. He always passes the buck. A little bit disappointing in that respect. Never tries the through ball or the risky ball. Give it someone else to do. Here's Kearney. Fulham desperate for an equaliser. Fulham would be disappointed in the extreme to come away from this game with nothing. Not enough quality in front of goal. Wrong selections inside the 18-yard box. So frustrating for Marco Silva. But here's Harry Wilson. Deflected effort over the top of the crossbar. He was playing in the left channel by Iwobi. They almost got him in again. Ethan Pennock. Oh, my God. What a performance him and Collins, by the way. Yeah, excellent defending. Calm. Again. Collected. Not rash. Covering spaces. Brilliant. Here's the corner. Kearney to take it as we approach stoppage time. The ball comes out to Robinson. Robinson plays it behind Iwobi. And then they have to build again from deep. Anderson, edge of the centre circle. Six minutes of added time, as we were saying. There will be a minimum six minutes additional time to be played in this match. I say minimum of six minutes. Iwobi, back to Sander Berger. Space out wide for Castagna. Castagna gets hold of it. 
then sends it back to Harry Wilson. Wilson, the Welshman, tries to run at the Brentford defence. He's got a lot of green shirts around him. Castagna's ball into the centre is straight into the arms of Flecken. No one attacking it at the near post. There's only one in there, Sam, and actually Kearney could be should be busting a gut to get in there. Well, the problem oh. is they've replaced Jimenez with Munez. It does, yeah, I know what you mean. All the, rest of, all the rest of the players are all those creative types on the edge of the box. It doesn't matter, you've still got to get in the box and make numbers. No matter what position you are, you know if the ball's going wide, you need numbers in the box. They haven't done that so far, and no. that's been a problem. Bassey almost running into traffic. The other thing that Brentford haven't done is they haven't dropped too deep when they have got the ball clear they've pushed up to the halfway line try to keep the ball in opposition territory just for a moment to give their defence a bit of a rest that defence that has worked so hard tonight and worked well Pinnock and Collins in particular but I think Norgaard screening in front of them oh, as well it's is been such brilliant. an asset yeah. here is Sander Berger getting to within 25 yards of the goal but sending it wide to Adama Traore his low cross is picked up by Wilson top of the keeper and into the far corner of the net and this Thames tussle is once again all square it's taken until injury time and once more Brentford have thrown away an advantage Harry Wilson off the bench to spare Fulham's blushes they dominated the game they struggled to score they needed a moment of genius and genius this was what a goal do you know what? It's the first cross that's really not been right in the danger area. It's dropped in front of Ben Mee and the touch and volley and bit of skill from Wilson. We said when he come on he's capable of scoring a goal, but that, I mean, that's deliberate, that's genius, that's a brilliant goal. He does score a wonderful goal. He has flicked the ball, facing the wrong way, with the outside, with the outside, of, his outside left of his left foot, over the top of his own body, oh, over no. the defender, over the top into the far corner of the net. I thought VAR were looking at listening to some. No, well I hope not, because that is one of the goals of the season. That's going to be up for a Puskas award. That. And they've made a change, and uh, Yama look has come on. Deserved it, Sam. They did deserve it. Of course they did. I mean, I, I, listen, Brentford have been brilliant defensively. Yeah, but they've, but they've not been good without the ball. But and Thomas Frank will admit that not been as good with the ball or without it not been good with the ball yeah, sorry with the ball yeah, yeah. Um, they, they, they're normally better than this with yeah. the ball but, but I, I think Fulham have done so well in the match that they deserve an equaliser they've got that equaliser but I'm telling you now you won't see a better goal than this you know that goal that Erling Haaland scored in the Champions League it's up there it's up there it's close to that I know it's you mean. that good I don't know, I think Haaland is a tad better personally, but I don't know, you know, I'd have to... I know what you mean, it's a brilliant Mate, goal. It, I mean, look, I don't know, I've never done it. <laughs> I don't think many have. have I. But it was so close to the goal, to get it up and over and in the far corner with that little touch with the outside of the boot, when you're facing the wrong way... Yeah. Mate. It's an instinctive thing, isn't it? That's unbelievable. It really is one of the goals of the season so far. Oh, nice play. Sharda sends it into Norgard down the left can Brentford win it late on they send the cross into the box Sharda's ball goes through the six yard box and out the other side it's 1-1 late on and once again Brentford were heading for the chequered flag and their car stalled another two points thrown away that's 13 points from winning positions that they've thrown away if it stays like this Marco Silva is screaming for the lads to go he doesn't want an Everton situation yeah, he wants a winner, that's what he wants. Ball I think he'd take the, the draw now. Chasing it was uh, Jensen over on the far touchline. He's tussling with Robinson. Robinson gets it to Berger. Berger gets it forward. I have to Up say, to Robinson's, Robinson's fitness sound has been Munez incredible. beats Pinnock in the air, and then it bounces off me. Munez continues his run, but it's going to go back to the goalkeeper, who sends it high into the night sky. 95 gone. Yeah, Robinson's fitness is brilliant. Yeah. Everything uh -oh. about him is brilliant. Grasslap's got the wrong side of the ball, though. And there's men over inside the box, and one of them is Carvalho! 
Oh, saved brilliantly by the goalkeeper. Comes back out to Sharda, and it's over the top by Ramelot from six yards out. What, what a, a save. chance! But the initial save from Leno is absolutely terrific, oh and he saved the point for Fulham. A brilliant bit of play down the right-hand side after Bassi was beaten to the ball by Roslav. The cross came into Carvalho and it would have been absolutely met with the howls of derision had Carvalho scored and Leno stopped him from doing so. What a save. What an end to the game. And what a brilliant tackle as well. I think that's Sander Berger, isn't it? Bert Leno. Take a bow, fella. That was a super stop at the end of a game which isn't it he amazing hasn't that, seen much accent no but how football can change from a goal yeah Fulham get panicky here's the corner underneath the goalkeeper heading away by Castagna headed back in we played our 96 minutes we might have a bit more still to play flicked into the air oh. Anderson back to his goalkeeper they want to get it forward quickly Leno wants to bowl it out towards this near side they've got Wilson up the pitch Castagna gets it back to Anderson they need to get it long Anderson can no, do that no, but not no. on this time and it's kicked clear into the air by Ruiz Lavinitz once again with Fuller halfway line running down the right the clock has ticked into the 97th minute we're supposed to only have six additional moments it's forward by Kearney into Robinson can they win it here down the left into Wilson header yes statistic has belonged to Fulham and now the scoreboard does as well Harry Wilson off the bench to give all three points against Brentford for Fulham for only the second time at home in 34 years <laughs> your voice is gone what a finish do you know what we talked a second ago about Robinson's fitness they are going for the win and who's the man on the left hand side who's sprinted like he's just come on the pitch to make it happen Robinson what a ball and that man who's just scored the wonder goal has got the winner with a brilliant header here he is Robinson we're getting to see the replay keeps going puts in a crawl what a header it's a brilliant cross from Robinson it's a diving a header do. from Wilson. Crouching low, stooping low to power the header into the top corner. It's a terrific finish to the game. What an end. What late drama. We said to you, Fulham, Brentford, late goals. There's now been 13 goals that have been scored in the last 75 minutes. And after the 75 minute mark in the last nine meetings between these two drama always unfolds when these two tussle do you know what Sam it might have even took it come off his head and shoulder you know Just, but it doesn't matter who cares brilliant impact from the substitution well done the manager for making the substitution as well 99 minutes have been played two goals in five minutes six seconds not bad, that's what I call a turnaround. And Fulham about to win at home. They've deserved it. It's just another manic Monday. But this time, it's Fulham that are celebrating. For only the second time in a generation, Fulham beat Brentford at the cottage. And for so long it didn't look likely, but Harry Wilson has come off the bench and scored two goals late on and Thomas Frank and Brentford have thrown away another lead Fulham and Brentford always a story and Harry Wilson is it Fulham two, Brentford one Wow, what a finish <laughs> I mean we got to injury time and Brentford had it one they were defending like lions and out of nowhere off the bench Harry Wilson steps out in the West End and does what he does right next to the river. Incredible from Harry Wilson, incredible from Fulham. And you've got to feel a little bit for Brentford 
but they didn't really come here to play. No. He's got a cracking goal and tried to defend it. They thought they got that job done, but the side that dominated eventually won the game, and you've got to say Fulham deserved it. Yeah, I, I think it was a mixture of, of maybe Brentford being a bit cautious, but also Fulham stopping them playing. I think there was a real intensity about Fulham without the ball to try and nullify Brentford and win the ball high up, therefore being able to pin them in. I mean, you're right, Brentford did defend man what like incredibly actually as the second half went on and we oohed and odd about whether it was the right subs to make with when you're taking Emil Smith Rowe and Reese Nelson on but the manager got it right because what a substitution and I just gotta give Robinson a mention oh when you see him live and the power and the speed endurance to keep going and the quality of the ball at the end for, for Wilson's winner so many good things to think about Fulham tonight not just because they've won you know we did talk about the, the lack of goals being a concern but so much of their play was good to watch well rapid Robinson well, he's good, you know, he? he does magic tricks in his spare time and he's pulled out a <laughs> rabbit from the hat tonight with that cross for the winner and uh, the Fulham players are on the pitch celebrating the Fulham fans are celebrating you can hear them we're right in the middle of them here at Craven Cottage uh, to be fair to the Brentford fans they've applauded their players who've now left the field and they will wonder what's hit them. It's yet another away defeat for them. They've lost every away game so far this season, but that one's going to hurt them more than the rest. It'll hurt to a degree, but I think when the cold light of day comes tomorrow or the next day, Thomas Brown will see that performance and think, that's not us, we're a bit better than that. We can't rely on defending for 80 minutes out of 90 in a game and, and being that good defender. We've got to cause teams more problems, and they do generally. You know, it was, a, it was a poor performance without, sorry, with the ball. And I don't think really on reflection he'll have too, he can't have too many complaints. Listen, this is nothing like the Europa League run no. that you had, but there was, there was late drama, the fans are going wild, there's little hints of that magic. And it's been, it's been a great and a memorable you know, night. It's funny you say it, because when the second goal went and I'm up, Sam's up, we're so buzzing because <laughs> we love football. I love this club anyway. And I did think, whoa, I remember that feeling here and that atmosphere. I mean, the importance of it's less, of course, because it's just three points. But I think after the disappointment at Evan, and then feel like you're in a big derby against Brentford, you're going to lose and all of a sudden you win. It felt special. Felt like a little turning point for you. You might just see now them have a bit more confidence in the fight. Because sometimes you need someone like that just to free yourself up. Because a lot of them look nervy in the final third, a bit rushed. I'll tell you what, there's one thing we can say for sure. Jerry Wilson will be knocking on the door before the next game. <laughs> and I hope I'm playing. Well, he will. But in between the equaliser and the winner, Bernd Leno, who's just walked past us here, he's pulled off a wonder save from Cavalli, has not he? Do you know what? I didn't know whether to criticise Fulham for going for the win and leaving themselves open and nearly losing it. Because you were saying that he'd take a draw now, Silver. Well, I think after Evan, and they deserve to win, and it, you know, it's like, right, OK, we've got back in it. Let's not concede again late on and lose it after all that hard work to get back in it. But they were bombing. And then, I mean, I thought they should have scored, really. Brilliant save. Um, how would you describe the, the equaliser? What was it? What technique? Outside of the foot. As you're moving away from goal. And he's airborne. Yeah, he's a really difficult technique, but it's quite instinctive because it's the only thing he had. It's the only option he had. Yeah, he's improvised, doesn't he, really? Yeah, yeah and there's not, but not many players would think to do that. Uh, Brilliant. And, and the winner, you're right. It, Did it, it hit his shoulder? It was head and shoulder, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it was chaos matter. going on. I can't really see, but. It didn't matter, really. They hit the back of the net, that's all that matters. You know what matters? It's the position he got himself in. And Harry, Harry Wilson. Harry Wilson got him getting confused. Yeah, it was Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's been a long weekend. Well, Wilson is always in areas to score goals. I know he's got a great left foot and long range free kicks, etc. But he loves getting in little positions where he can score. He enjoys scoring goals. He does it for the national team. I think Fulham need more of that. Players who are willing to take a risk to get in positions. Because so many times we saw crosses come in. One, maybe two in the box. Need more of that more of that because they're getting great position well he staked his claim tonight no doubt about it it's time now for us to pick our man of the match with Enterprise Rentcar 
Man of the match on TalkSport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Whatever the mission, home or away, Enterprise helps over 120,000 people every day. Okay, so Danny Murphy. <laughs> this is an interesting one because <laughs> there's an obvious name, the, the goal scorer. Uh, Harry Wilson got them both. But he wasn't on the pitch for long. But I just wonder who you're going to pick here. I've got to pick him because he's completely turned the game on his head. And the main part of that was the brilliant improvised goal. To then keep going and get the winner. Yeah, he's, it's a game changer. I thought Reese Nelson was terrific. And I thought Robinson was out absolutely outstanding. Not just because he's good with the ball and run and he's great to watch live and bombing forward. He nullified one of the best players, oh, best forwards in the league in Buemo at the moment. Didn't really give him a kick. No, he had a, he had a chance of winning it, Robinson. You've got to give it to Wilson. The irony is that if it stayed one there, you're probably giving it to Finnick. He's, he's had a great game at centre half for Brentford. Or Collins. Yeah. One or the other. Pinnock could have given it probably. No, no, actually, either or. Yeah. I yeah. Maybe a joint man of the match. Yeah. The reality is, no. put it in two goals. Brentford have lost away again. And it is Harry Wilson, our man of the match from today's game with Enterprise Rent-A-Car.